nightmare is about to happen. Trump's got the money to pay this corrupt judgment. And that is not what Letitia wanted to happen, I'm here to tell you. We'll be on the air in seconds, guys. Here we go. It sure is. Oh, man. Welcome to the program, everyone. It is Monday morning, and today is the day that, well, President Trump has to come up with the bond money for the person who very, I think it's a fair statement to say, the most corrupt attorney general in America, and perhaps the most corrupt State Attorney General in the history of America, Letitia James. You know, Leti this is, you know, President Trump's an amazing person because you know he got this this corrupt judgment against him that is just insane and wrong, and he did nothing wrong, and you know, and Letitia James very corrupt, and this in corrupt judge who is really just undermining the confidence that people have in this country towards our justice system. You know, judges are supposed to be beyond such things. Here in Florida, now I don't know what it is in, in your state if you're not in Florida or what it is in New York, but in Florida, you know, our judges, of course we have judges that, that run for office and, and, and stuff like everywhere else, but when you go and vote for your judges, you don't know if they're Republican or Democrat. It's not revealed because judges are supposed to be beyond such things. Now, I do have friends that are judges in this town that I've known over the years, usually, mostly, before they were judges. And I know, and by the way, my friends are Republicans. I, I don't, I'm not friends with Democrats. I'm sorry to tell, tell you. You're not a Democrat, are you? No, I don't know. I'm not friends with Democrats. I am friends with judges here in South Florida. They're all Republican. Some of them I knew before they were judges, some after. And when I go and vote, I know. But if you look at the ballot, it, there's no R or D next to their name. And judges are supposed to be beyond such things. And here we have Judge and Goron, who just is, is a disgrace to the bench, to the robe, to just being a judge. And, you know, when you look at this judge in Goron, who James O'Keefe exposed in a couple weeks back with that perverted Jim video of him sexually harassing a, a young, beautiful woman, judge in Goron, uh, which has been totally suppressed from the media, he's just a complete disgrace. I don't think we've had a judge... So corrupt, at least not openly corrupt. You know, there have been times when judges have done things and they get in trouble and, you know, judges can run into legal troubles. But he's, this guy's in no legal trouble yet and he's still on the bench. I don't think we've seen such a corrupt judge. Do you guys? And he does it all on TV. Um, but President Trump is such an amazing person, and this judgment against him, which is insane, I mean, this is like, you know, big tobacco-like judgments, um, and people, where is he going to get the money? No one will give him the bond. And then over the weekend, Trump on Friday, he just happens to mention on Truth Social, oh, by the way, I have $500 million, half a billion dollars, I have five hundred million dollars in cash just lying around in the bank. That's, that's a, and, and it's beautiful. Beautiful. And Donald Trump today could walk in and just pay this half a billion dollar corrupt judgment bond against him by the corrupt Letitia James and the corrupt judge in Goron. This is their worst nightmare, in particular, Letitia James. And you look at the media over the weekend and the way they've been behaving, they're, they're, they're calling him broke and poor. They even have that senile, corrupt old coot, Joe Biden, out there making jokes about Trump being poor, poor, broke. He's got a half a million dollars in cash just lying around. 
That's crazy. They don't want him to pay it. Letitia James wanted to see something today. She's got all the paperwork done. She wanted to go and put locks on the front of Trump Tower or something. She wanted to do something very high profile, Letitia James. She wanted to go somewhere and see something that Trump owned so she could look like something on, on television. And guess what? Didn't happen. Didn't happen. He's got the money. And uh, he's going to pay it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. So when the appeal, and then you know what's going to be even more beautiful than this. So he pays the half a billion dollar against him. So then it can go through the appeals process. And the, how many times did the appeals court overrule Judge and Goron in this case? I've lost track. There's so many cases. It's so hard to keep track of all this stuff. But it's done. It's over. So when the appeals court overrules Judge N. Goron's corrupt decision, you know what I'm looking forward to is when Letitia has to give the money back to President Trump. Oh, now that'll probably not even be on the news. They don't want to cover that. They better not spend the money. You know, when, when President Trump comes in with his half a billion dollars today and gives it to Letitia James and her corrupt office, they better put that in a trust account and hold it. Don't spend it on the illegals. Don't start building illegal shelters and such because the appeals court are going to make you give that money back. And if you're broke, well, maybe, maybe Trump can start seizing some things from New York. Maybe that would be better. What, what do you think? What does New York own that Trump could seize if they spend his bond money on illegals or something else? You know, I remember Rush Limbaugh, <coughs> um, this, of course, this was many, many years ago. This is before Rush was sick. And I think this is before Trump came down the escalator. And there was a story in the news, and he was, uh, that there was a, this is before the pandemic. There was an exodus of wealthy people from, from New York over taxes. And Rush had a whole breakdown of this. And there were, at the time, about five or six uber-rich families that were supporting the entire city. Remember, because in New York, you had, you know, if you live in, I don't know how people do this up north. You have federal income tax, state income tax, and if you live in New York City, you have city income tax. In Florida, we have no state income tax. We just have our federal stuff, which is nice. We have sales tax and property tax and all that stuff, but we don't have all that other stuff. So... So with the mass exodus that's, that's occurred in the past four years out of New York City and the state of New York, they need Trump's half a billion dollars. They may blow it when they get it. They may take it like a lottery winner and blow it. So maybe he'll be the one seizing some stuff. What does New York State own that Trump can seize? I don't know. Is there any, is there any property in New York that President Trump has wanted? But yeah, he's got the money and he's going to pay it. Sorry, Letitia. Now, we're going to take our first break of the week. Your calls are certainly welcome today. We've got a lot to cover. We'll cover this and much more on the program. Uh, our number is toll free, 1 888 465 2631. If you're new to the program, welcome. This is where MAGA comes to talk. This is Florida's longest running radio show, The Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian Craig. Our number toll-free from anywhere, 1-888-465-2631. 888 465 We'll take our first break of the week and be right back. Oh, yeah, this is great. This is, this is exactly what Letitia did not want. And that is Trump paying. Hold on. Mm-hmm. 
if you're on hold, hang in there. And, uh, oh, Bruce. Bruce gifted 10 memberships. Thanks so much, Bruce. And, and uh, those of you that uh, won Bruce's uh, memberships there, remember you got the cool access to the cool emojis now? And you get your name in a different color so you stand out. Cool. Thanks, Bruce. Oh, man. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Trump is just amazing. Oh, don't forget, order your mighty MAGA lion. There is no better way to watch your Trump rallies than cuddling your mighty MAGA lion. There's a link in the description of the video or go to MightyMAGALion.com. This is the only Trump-inspired merchandise wearing the MAGA hat. And the Mighty MAGA Lion is available only through me. You will find this nowhere. Isn't he cute? He's very cute. Absolutely. MightyMAGALion.com. If you buy more than one, you get a discount. And uh, as I say, available exclusively through me at MightyMAGALion.com. There is a link in the description. All right? Yes, yes, yes. Very cute and cuddly. Mm-hmm. Yes, Mighty Mega Lion has an emoji. <laughs> oh man. Trump is amazing. We will be back in 26 seconds. Any of you guys catch my vertical live stream this morning around 3.30 a.m.? Here we go. Beaches on 95.9 FM, the Treasure Coast on 106.9 FM, Harris in Boca on 95.3 FM, Fort Lauderdale on 96.9 FM, and anywhere in the world that true All right. 18 minutes after the hour. Call us on hold. Stand by. It is Monday morning. Were you guys a little more active over the weekend? I know I was. If you're waking up this morning in pain, go see Dr. Philip Appleton. He's my chiropractor. And he wants to be your chiropractic physician, too. You know, his laser wave pain treatment works on so many different kinds of pain. I, I go through the long list all the time, and that's not even a complete list. And, you know, the laser wave pain treatment, which has rid me of pain five times, different types of pain, different parts of my body. The laser wave pain treatment of Dr. Appleton's actually repairs the damage that is causing you the pain. It's absolutely amazing. That's right. It's, and also, appointments are not necessary. Walk-ins are welcome every day of the week. He's open Monday through Saturday. And it just works. You know, there's no drugs. There's no downtime. It's 100% painless. That's right. And Dr. Appleton performs all the laser away pain treatments himself, not an assistant. Give him a call. 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. Online, AppletonCairo.com. Give Dr. Appleton a call and say bye-bye to your pain. Okay, so President Trump shocked the world on Friday when he announced, oh, I just have, happen to have half a billion dollars in cash lying around to pay Letitia. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good morning. This is Richie. Hey, Richie. I heard... I heard a little voice in my ear at four o'clock in the morning. It was even earlier than that, and it was your voice. Yeah, I was. I was. Lo <clears throat> I finished my show prep early, and I was. I uh, was. I was uh, said, "Well, I got some time," and I did a live stream on YouTube from my back porch. Yeah, I says, "My goodness, he never sleeps." Mm -hmm. and so, but you nope. things that that really a light bulb came out of my head, and 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 you said certain things about President Trump. President Trump, let, let me explain, and I think it's going to hit, it's, my phone's going to come on your head too, because 
He is the poster child or poster man for capitalism. I mean, he is the ultimate capitalist. He's got a giant 757, whatever it is, seven. Oh, and by the way, you know, he's Mr. Monopoly. If they created Monopoly today, it would be Trump. And his his 757 is not just a specialty private one. It's got those roll it's got those Rolls-Royce engines on them. Yeah, I mean, he is the he is Mr. Capitalism and they all looked up to him. I mean, the power that he had. His cap- he had more power than the president of the United States and he had more power before all this happened. He was, they all wanted to be with him. They all, he was on every show. They all wanted to take pictures with him. They, Oprah, all of them. They, I mean, he was like, they wanted to be around him because he was, he was Mr. Capitalism. But unfortunately, they're all, they're all communists and, and socialists. And, and, and there's a, there's a war in this country going on between communism and capitalism. I mean, this is so obvious to me. Yeah. He is the rep- he is the representative of, like I said, he, he has, first of all, he, he, Mar-a-Lago. Let, let's look at Mar-a-Lago. You've taken a tour of the White House, haven't you? Oh, yeah. You've been to work. The White House is an old, old, dumpy building. People that I hear are shocked. I've never been there. But I hear people are shocked. They go in. Inside- well, let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The rooms are, we got to, hey, listen, this thing was built like in 1800, all right? I give it that. But, the, you know, like if you see the White House, the big difference between um, Mar-a-Lago in the White House. When you go to the White House, and if you, you've seen this on television, because I've been to the White House, I've been in some private areas there. You know, I'm, 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 I'm more connected. I, I don't brag like everybody else very often, but I've, I've been places and know people and get invited to stuff. But if you go to the White House, okay, and you see this on TV, they have the chairs you see that have gold, you know, gold on them, gold arms, gold. That's, that's painted on. That's not real gold. It's painted. And when uh, when you go to the White House, it's a dump. It's a, it's like a run. It's got it's. You go to Mar-a-Lago and you see gold on on chairs in the ceiling. It's real. Dump in the middle of a dumpy city. Yeah, that's true. Um, the, the, yes, and Mar-a-Lago is sitting on a peninsula, and, it, and it's beautiful. He's got the ocean, the intercoastal. It's an island on itself. And it, and it, so when he became president, he actually took a downgrade in his living conditions. Yes. I'm great in his flying condition. Mm-hmm. The only thing he got was the he got the power of the government, which they rep. They hate the fact that a capitalist took over the government. They are that he he is in their way. He's in their way of the agenda of the open border to let everyone come in. Well. But but I'll tell you, you know, when, when Donald Trump came out on Friday and said, oh, by the way, I have $500 million lying around. And this, and this has nothing to do with that truth social deal that he made $3 billion on Friday. Um, that I, the last thing Letitia James wants is for President Trump to pay that money. Well, communists and socialists, and they, and they can't stand the fact that he bailed himself out again. These people... And the brain is, is, is he's he's against all this climate change too. He's against all their fake religions and all this other garbage. And he tells it to the he's behind the American people. Yeah. And you said something. They don't. They hate us. They really hate us. They don't care. You think if there was a a, a mass vote right now in the United States of America, American people would vote for open borders? No, they wouldn't. But they don't care what we think. They. And it's right out in the open right now. They don't. They don't care about. So, so when when President Trump pays, the, and if you if you follow the media, the media over the weekend and even early this morning, they're they're ignoring for the most part that President Trump says he has the money. They're still acting like he doesn't have the money and he couldn't get it from his friends. And what's he going to do? With the, they're in bed with the, they're in bed with the socialist Congress. The whole country, people have to realize what we're up against. It's not just President Trump. He represents, like I said, he's a capitalist and they're communists. So you, we were, and a bunch of the people in this country, believe it or not, believe in capitalism. Yes. They don't have the handout for government handout. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, this what's going on all over the all over the country is disgraceful. Now the guy in Chicago, that mayor in Chicago, threw all the, all the immigrants out on the street, and now they're raising hell about that. Well, what I can't wait for is for when Letitia James has to give Trump the money back. Oh, I love that, yeah. That's going to be beautiful. Yeah, she's a, listen, it's just, it's just, and you know, they've, they've gotten their money, all these people. 
that 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 sold his capitalism have robbed the American people from their tax money and their and their and their their crazy wars that go on. They've made their money like that. They haven't worked for their money. What what will it when when it comes time to pay today? What will be the reaction of of Letitia James? Are they going to not accept it? Are they going to try to come up with some technicality? Why about the check not being what happened? When somebody comes to, I'm assuming it's going to be in some type of special check, you know, like a cashier's check. It can't be, can't be, it can't be in actual money, and it, I, I don't imagine it'll be a personal check. I mean, how do you, what do you do? Call the bank and ask if the check's good. How's that work? You know what? You know, I, well, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but you know what, what? I would love to see, and it wouldn't happen. I would love to see President Trump pull up with five billion dollars in pennies and say, here's your money, and just open the bags and start dumping. That's true. That, that's a great idea. Hey, I, I, hey, Rich, I got to run. I appreciate the call. You know, this thing about the pennies, um, that's something that everyone's been talking about all weekend. It's all over social media, all over the Internet. People are talking that Trump should pay the fine in pennies. How many pennies is that? Half a billion dollars is how many pennies... 500 million, how many pennies is that? And how many dump trucks would it take? And how long would it take to count such a thing? I don't know. Are there that many pennies in, a, in America? I don't know. I don't know. All right, listen, we'll take our break for the bottom of the hour. If you're on hold, stand by. I'm Brian Craig. This is The Steve Kane Show. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. I mean, how many pennies are there in America? 50 billion pennies. No, I don't think there's that many. What's the smallest denomination that he could give it in? I mean. Freedom Soup said the White House is not a dump. The, the White, when you go to the White House, the room sizes are small because, you know, that's how things were way back then. But um, it's, it's not as nice as you would think. I was very surprised. Even the portraits and things aren't as nice as you would I expect. <clears throat> 50 billion pennies. I don't, uh, yeah. Yeah. There can't be that many pennies. There cannot be. 10 billion nickels. Wow. It's an exciting day. Trump's amazing. Only only Trump would be able to have just half a billion dollars just just lying around ready to give Letitia Canadian pennies. $2 bills. I love $2 bills. I love them. $2 bills are awesome. You can still get them if you ask the uh, bank. <clears throat> they usually have the $2 bills. And they're nice because they're all like usually new, uncirculated. But sometimes if you pay with $2 bills... People don't. People a lot of times think they're not real. They've never seen two dollar bills before. Oh man. Yeah, many times I've gone to spend $2 bills and they don't know that they'll, they'll say, this isn't real. I got my daughter into the $2 bill thing too. She gets them sometimes. Same thing happens. I, 
you know, Candace Owens is trending on X still. We'll be back shortly, guys. With half a billion dollars? If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. And everyone, please like the video. That helps grow the channel, guys. One more commercial after this, then we will be back. This is awesome stuff. Mm. Awesome stuff, guys. $500 million weighs 22 pounds? You would think it'd weigh more than that. I've seen a million dollars stacked in $100 bills, and it's a pretty big stack. When I was at the, I went to the U.S. Mint in Washington with my daughter, and they had a. When you walk in, they have a million dollars stacked up. All right, calls on hold, stand by. You know this thing about pain and pennies, Trump pain and pennies. I remember Steve Kane years ago made a bet with a liberal guy. I can't remember what the bet was about. But Steve won, it was like $300, and the person paid in pennies. And they thought it was so funny. They, 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 had, they went to the bank. It was like, I think it was around about $300. It's been many years. And uh, they came in with big money bags, but they were filled with pennies. I don't remember how many bags it was, but it was a lot, and it was, a, it was heavy. And uh, Steve didn't care. $300 was $300. He just took the bags to the bank and... Deposited the money, you know. I'll, I'll tell you, know, hey, money's money. All right, but I don't think there's enough pennies in America for that. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Brian. It's Greg. Oh, hey, Greg. What's up? I'm just listening to you guys. First of all, let's address how the transaction will take place. The money is how smart he is to New York, and it's put in a court registry. You just don't hand over a check. And by the way, Trump, I think he does have lawyers. Or, oh, yeah, he does. Um, they'll communicating, confirming the process, and that's how it will go. And it gets put into a, a court registry. No one touches that money until the case is adjudicated. <laughs> oh, now, does everyone – now, just before we move on, Greg, uh, this is Greg, too, stating what everybody knows, but he wants to sound like he's smart. See, what, this is what's going on here, Greg. MAGA people are enjoying the fact that Trump has the money lying around, $500 million, half a billion dollars, and he's going to pay it. We're just enjoying it, kind of fantasizing about how it'll get paid. Rich, you're talking like you. By the way, Richie, I know you're listening, and you're probably talking. Of course he is. Richie, you guys are out of control. Listen to you. But by the way, let me ask you this question. Why did, if Trump has a quote-unquote laying around which is such a late day pay term to discuss a half a billion dollars. I know. It's how rich he is. Why did he have, no, no, why did he have his lawyers, okay? Who was lying, his lawyers or him? Why did they just file a motion before the court last week telling him he doesn't? I'll give you an example. Okay, I, I'll tell you what. You know, no, no, I'm answering your question. Why did he not just take care of it? Why did he try to put it on? You know, right now, I'll just, I'll illustrate this. You, I am answering it. 
but I'm not going to answer in the way that you want me to answer. Right now, I'm wearing a pair of uh, checkerboard Vans, and you know, and the one. It's not a, the only thing irrelevant here is going to be you when I hang up on you in a minute, okay? Because I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Uh, oh, okay. You don't mind getting hung up on? Okay. Goodbye. I didn't want to hang up. Right now, I'm wearing a pair of my checkerboard Vans. And uh, this is a very old pair. And they, it has a hole in the, in the toe. You know, Vans, they, they wear out, you know, Vans are usually last me about six months. And they get a little hole where the big toe goes. Usually in my left foot, I guess I favor that. It has something to do. I don't know. Now, I don't have to wear Vans with, with a hole in I could go out and, and get a new pair of Vans. I could have gotten a pair yesterday that don't have a hole in the toe. But I, why spend the I got 50 bucks. It's 50 bucks a pair, 55 bucks a pair. But I, you know, I don't want to spend the 55 bucks. It doesn't mean I don't have the money, okay? And why should Trump just give over half a billion dollars to Letitia and her uh, corrupt crew in New York if he doesn't have to. I did not want to hang up on Greg, okay? But when I say that I'm going to hang up on you in a minute, and he says, okay, do it, I got to do it. I mean, you know, what am I supposed to do, you know? <sighs> You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Hey, Mike, you know, this, this is what the liberals don't get, right? Do you hear the, by the way, do you hear the frustration and aggravation in his voice that Trump's got the money, the cash? Um, you know, it, it, we're just enjoying this. We're savoring the moment, right? That, that Trump's got the money and cash without having to sell anything. Right, and that's the thing. And think about this. Where, let, let's go back to the whole penny, dumping pennies on, on the, uh, on where, where would he dump the thing with the dump trucks? How about dumping those, all those pennies at the foot of Judge and Gorin's courthouse. How about this? How about that? This is what I thought you were going to say. How about dump the pennies at the portion of the wall that's not finished? That many pennies would probably seal the rest of the wall and the border up. That's right. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Think about this. When, when he, on Friday, when he announced that he had the money, I can just see her, uh, Letitia James, Boiling over and the steam coming out of her ears. Oh, yeah, she's pissed. I mean, you heard Greg. And, and Letitia James's whole career is this. Her whole identity is, see, she was all ready to see something. And, and Trump's got the money lying around. You heard how frustrated Greg, too, is that Trump's got the cash just lying around without sweating after he's paid all this other crap. And could you imagine Letitia James whose entire identity is wrapped around this. How frustrated she must be. Oh, she ran on Get Trump. That's what she ran on. Is, is Letitia James the one that said he's too white or something? What was it she said? Too old, too white, too... What was that saying she said? She had this three-beat thing. What was that? They, too, too pale, too male, and too stale. Although that mean, pale means white. Pale. She called him a pale face. What is she, an Indian? Too, what was it? She said he too pale... Too what? Too male, too male, and too stale. Too pale, too male, and too stale. <laughs> what is she? Got Eminem writing her speeches? Who knows? Who knows? But, but she's a Democrat. They come up with stuff like that. That sounds racist. That sounds racist. Too pale. That, that, that is racist. That's very racist. She, she's, a black, she's a black supremacist. But yeah, she's a black black. But again, this, she's a Democrat. Democrats are known for being racist. Oh yes, it's, it's not a surprise, and that's the deal. I mean, Judge Goron is another one that. Oh, okay, I'm gonna give. By the way, how can someone? What does it mean to be too male? How can you be too much of a man? What does that mean? I mean, I, and, and and what and and how white is too? When you say too pale, that means too white. How white is too white? Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe she's thinking Snow White, you know, from Snow White and Seven Dwarves. Maybe 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 that stuff of Joe's that they found near the Situation Room, that cocaine, is that that's that's white, right? Yeah. Is that yeah? Too yeah. Too male may she may be referring to, well, what they call toxic masculinity. 
Toxic masculine. So yeah, I'm trying. I just want to know. Maybe somebody could ask Letitia today. How white is too white? Like what? Wh- how how pale is acceptable? And then at this point, you're too pale. Like Conan O'Brien is like as white as it gets, right? He's almost like an albino. Yeah. So so okay. So let's say that's the most pale you can be. Okay. So that he's obviously too pale because he's so white. Conan O'Brien. All right, so, and, and Donald Trump has a tan all the time because he's on the call. So I just wanted to know, he's, he's, I'm whiter than him because I'm not out in the sun as much. And when I am, I'm wearing my Make America Great Again hat to block the sun from my face. So I must be, if, if Trump is too pale, I know I got to be too pale. is too white for Letitia. At what what point is whiteness acceptable to her? Is it like, I don't know. <clears throat> you know, yeah, these Democrats all the time think about, oh, if a white person wants to get a tan, they'll say, well, you're trying to be more black because you want to get a tan. Mm. You know? Yeah. All right. Take care. Appreciate the call. Yeah. All right. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? The <laughs> And my first name is Eisen. All right, Eisen. What's up? I just want to say that uh, we're doing very good in the polls. Yes, yes, we are. When you say we, you mean you mean Trump and MAGA, right? Yeah, definitely. No doubt, no doubt. Michigan, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and um, one more state. I want to say Nevada. Uh, there, there are key battle states, and there we're ahead of the game. We're, we're maybe one point behind, uh, one point in the lead over Biden in Pennsylvania, but we're still doing good. We're still doing good. And with this nonsense that they pulled with this fine ordeal, his numbers are going to go up. I, I, put, I put money on that. I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. How upset do you think Letitia James is that Trump has the half a billion dollars in cash money lying around? Oh, listen, when they're, they cannot stand anything that man does positive. Anything that that guy does positive or has, they want to see complete destruction of this guy. Complete, complete. And that is a very, very radical left. That's, and she's very open about it. She talks about his race. She talks about the fact that... He's a man. He's too white, and he's a man. Exactly. And let me tell you something. That is complete... She should be disbarred. Let me ask you, maybe... maybe where are you, where, where are you calling from? The Bronx in New York. Okay, you're in, Okay, so, you know, you're in New York. She's in New York. When she says Trump is too pale, how white is too white by her standard? What does that mean? Because he's, he's darker than I am. Listen, you, you're talking about a woman that has cerebral constipation. Has no... <laughs> she has what kind of constipation? Cerebral. What's that? What is that? I don't know what that means. Cerebral means head. A portion of... Oh, she has constipation in her... Br- oh, cerebral. I've never heard cerebral... Oh, yeah. I've never heard cerebral and constipation in this together like that. It took a second. Cerebral. Okay, I get it. I you give her too. I think you give her too much credit for having anything going on cerebrally. But you know, here's I, I the everybody that calls from New York. I ask this question because I want to try to get a buzz going in New York State. Letitia James, who worked for the government her entire life, first job was a legal aid public defender. How does someone that's worked for the city and state of New York their entire life, not married, no family wealth, how, how is her uh, net worth $15 million? Do you know how she became a millionaires 15 times over working for the city and state her whole life? Yeah, that's all George Soros. Oh, corruption. George Soros, yeah. She's corrupt. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure she's probably getting cash, cash, yeah. and <clears throat> that's part of the corrupt. See, you know, see, he, th- this guy, he's smart. You, you, you must call other radio shows because cerebral 
uh, constipation, which I've never heard those words together before. There's a more general um, term that we're not allowed to use. Blank for brains, the S word, blank for brains is the same thing, right? That's just, the, I love that. Cerebral constipation. I'm going to use that. I like that. Yeah, oh no, definitely, definitely. That works. I love that one. That's great. Most of us have had that. A lot of people in the world. Mo most do, yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> two, two don't equal four to them. They, it equals ten. And at the end of the day, we're doing very good. We're doing very good in the poll numbers. Uh, Trump is going to come over to the Bronx. He's going to walk Grand Conquers. The last president that actually did that was Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then he's going to go ahead and do a big rally over in um, Madison Square Garden. We're all waiting for him here. <clears throat> and we're going to make an attempt to go red. Can you imagine if, if New York goes red? And forget it. It'll, it'll be a done deal. Now, you know, this is, this is, an, inter okay, this is, an, in this is an interesting thing. Because, you know, I'm in Florida, so I know a little bit more about what goes on here with our jerk governor. You're in New York. All this talk, you're the first caller that I've had from the state of New York who has talked about New York going red. Is that really possible this time around? Are people that fed up? I think so. Um, the governor, um, this oh. um, oh. Kathy Hochul, yeah. went up there and she lost. She won by a margin. I think it was like 10 points, 10 points. And I, I have to tell you, a lot of people are very frustrated. What's going on? with the crime, the bill, bill reform, the immigration. Yeah, but that was, that, was, that was then. A lot's happened since then, and that's, that's not a very large... She was running against somebody that wasn't well-known and a lot of things. But uh, listen, I got to run for our break, but I appreciate the call and uh, uh, the vocabulary lesson. Take care. All right, we'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Delivered morning, 6 to 9. Hey, my true oldies listeners, John Tesh here with some intelligence for your retirement this time. Are you looking for a retirement advisor? You don't trust an experience or two big balls. If you're on hold, hang in there. And as it turns out, my friend Jupiter Joe Thomas possesses both of these. Whether you're in retirement or looking to retire, I want you to give local expert Joe Thomas a call. Here's the number, 564-743-0999. This is great. Or, even simpler, you can go to jupiterjoe.com. Mention my name, John Tesh. You'll receive a free copy of Joe's book, Retirement Know It All. Great book. Call 561-743-0999. Or remember, go to jupiterjoe.com. That's jupiterjoe.com. Hey, good morning, Brian. It's Lisa. And my husband and I received our My Pillow 2.0 that we ordered with Kane the other day to buy one, get one free. And they're our first My Pillow. And we love them. We absolutely love them. They're just absolutely marvelous. Yeah, I'm so glad. I got slippers on the way, too. Oh. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Everyone like the video. What a great day, guys. What a great day.
the air. All right, call us on hold. Stand by. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Our number toll free one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. You know, our fifth annual Manga Cruise is April twenty seventh, right? On the Celebrity Beyond, the flagship of Celebrity Cruise Lines, we're going to the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. And our cruise has been sold out for I don't know a couple of three months. We're getting down to the uh, end, right? I mean, we're like just over a month away from sailing. By the way, uh, those of you that uh, want to find me, I will be streaming. I will be on YouTube on the cruise while we're out on the cruise. It's an eight-day cruise. We leave on a Saturday, come back the following Sunday. So we'll miss a week of live shows here on the radio. We'll be running best ofs that week. Um, But I will be uh, live streaming on YouTube on the cruise ship. But... When we get down, when we get close to uh, sale dates, sometimes cabins open up at the last minute for whatever reason. Sometimes maybe, you know, the, when you have that many people going, maybe somebody didn't make it or they got sick. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give you Ian's number, our travel agent at Cruise and Travel Depot. Um, and those of you that have been on the waiting list, I know Ian has put, uh, you know, has uh, 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 put some people that have been on our waiting list over the last few months and have actually gotten cabins as they have opened up. I don't know if anything is available. I don't know if anything has opened up. But I'm going to give you his number because if you can, you want to join us. 561-244-5779. 561-244-5779. That's 561-244-5779. But again, it may be still 100% booked up on our ship. But if there, sometimes an opening will come and boom, he'll plug somebody in from the waiting list. All right, let's go back to the phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Brian. It's Arnold in Las Vegas. Hey, Arnold in Vegas. What's up? Well, I have, I have a theory. I think that uh, Trump is playing a little bit of chess here on these guys. The reason he hasn't paid, obviously, is to drive... Uh, the liberals crazy for sure, but I think also if you look carefully at the story, he's saying <clears throat> that amount of money was in cash and it was earmarked for his campaign. Mm-hmm. Therefore, if he pays the money now today out of that fund, he can then say they are interfering with the mm-hmm. campaign money. Maybe. I mean, one of the issues he's going to raise. Well, that's, that's part of their uh, goal. That's part of their goal because the campaign's so self-funded. But, you know, President, you're right. I agree with everything you said. Um, President Trump has been saying for a long time, I, I saw him on an interview a couple months ago, and they said, how are you juggling a campaign in these legal cases? And he says they're the same thing. It's poli- <laughs> the, ca- the cases are part of the campaign because of why they're coming after me. So, you know, you're, you're right on the money with that. Do you think Letitia James is excited or upset that Trump's got the money to pay it? Because I think she wanted to see something today. I think she is so upset that right now she's probably not sleeping or having any of her crew sleep. Oh. They're pouring over the law books going, what else can we charge her on? Paying too early? Paying in, in pennies? Paying whatever? We find- now... When is when is it due? Is it due by close of business today, or when the court opens? No, no, it was it was due officially today, which means twelve o one a.m. Like a car. Well, the, the the clerk's not open, so he's got to wait until what time do they open? Nine a.m. or ten a.m. And you know it's New York. Yeah, pr- probably around there. We'll know. I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure, you know, I, listen, I've never made a transaction so large, okay? So I'm, who has? Who knows? But um, I, just symbolically, wouldn't you like to see President, it's, it's, I'm sure it's some type of special wire transfer thing. I would love to see President Trump go in person with whatever document you do for some, a transaction this size and go to the clerk's office and give it to the clerk at the court. That'd be just so symbolic. No, no, for sure. But I, uh, I hope he doesn't do any of those shenanigans or games. I think he's going to deposit the money at his attorneys. They'll call up and say, "How do you want this handled?" Yeah, he needs to stay away from this completely mm-hmm. in terms of uh, bad faith. Because anything he does, the Democrats will then turn it around and say, "You see, he wants retribution." Yeah, what we were afraid of. What? Yeah. So no, he's got to. Even though his 
<laughs> you and I would be going, let's pay him pennies. Um, no, 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 no. You don't want to make it. You don't want to make a clown show. You don't want to make a clown show out of it. But I, I would. But I would like to see. I, he probably won't do this. But I think it would be nice to see him involved in the actual transaction, because I think I read. I was going to go by the airport this morning, but I thought I, to see if Trump Force One is at the airport this morning. I drive by there every day, but I, um, uh, but I didn't on the way in this morning. Because, you know, the Stormy Daniels jury selection begins today. Can you imagine? Stormy Daniels. She, she, she said that she made the whole thing up a couple years ago. Now she's back with Bragg. So, but I read that he was going to be in New York in regards to the skank or I'm sorry, the Stormy Daniels case. Yeah, they, they really put it on. And, when, you know, they're creating laws that he broke. Mm-hmm. Always afraid. I mean, look how successful this guy has been. You know, he, he he writes a book, number one. He's on TV for 12 years. He's got so many different careers, and now he has successfully broken the law in ways nobody else has. So he's a front runner in lobby. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate the call. Thanks so much. Early in the morning in Las Vegas. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, President Trump's about to pay $500 million to Letitia James. We're, we're, so we're celebrating this moment. What's going on with you? Hey, is this me on the air? It sounds like you. All right. Cool, man. Um, maybe you can't talk about it, Brian, but I... Mm. Have, <clears throat> just take campaign in the buddy that work is pitching in five ten dollars today uh which is going to be pretty cool uh maybe you can well no the money yeah tr pre the last caller mentioned this what president trump on when he announced on true social over the week i think it was friday right that he had the 500 mon uh, million dollars in cash line around he said it was money that he had set aside for the campaign that is true uh Maybe everybody can pitch in today, and we can give them a little boost. On yeah, I, I wish he would. I wish he would list the golden sneakers again. I tried, you know, I tried to buy those. Well, my wife, she tried to buy those golden sneakers, and they sold out before. She said, "What size should I get them in?" I say, "It doesn't matter. Just get as get them. Doesn't matter what size, because I'm never going to wear them, right? <laughs> they're going to go in the safe deposit box with my autographed manga hat." But, um, yeah, you're right. Is it, I mean, how upset do you think Letitia James is over the fact that he's got the money in cash to pay her? She must be ticked. She's going to be per pretty mad. Yeah. They set it so high, and then she put those interest fines on it, thinking that he didn't, because she wanted to take a golf course this week. She wanted to take a golf course or a building or something. She's got to be flipping out. Orange man bad. That's right. That's right. You too. Oh, man. All right, listen, we're coming up to the top of the hour break. We don't have time for another call before the top of the hour. So if you're on hold, stand by. My name is Brian. This is Florida's longest running radio show, The Steve Kane Show. And we're just celebrating that Trump yet again defeated the evil forces of the Uniparty, never Trumpers, the corrupt Letitia James and Goron, the Uniparty, everyone else. And it's just an exciting day. Our number is toll free no matter where you're listening. one 465 2631 888-465-2631. If you're on hold, hang in there. When we get back from the top of the hour, we'll go to the phones, which have been quite busy this morning. Great calls so far. So far, psh, calls have been spectacular today. I, yeah, yeah, I'm including Greg, too, in that. Gave me a moment to shine. All right. It's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. It's the Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian Craig. We'll be back right after our top of the hour break. WSFS 104.3 HD3 Miramar. WIRK 103.1 HD3.
I am so excited about all this today. You, aren't you guys excited? I bet you are. How could you not be? How could you not be? Oh yeah, Trump always wins against these jerks. House Republican. Oh, man. How exciting. All right. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show. Hour number two has begun. Call us on hold. Stand by. Just to recap, President Trump shocked the nation. <laughs> really? On Friday, when he posted the true social, oh, I've got half a billion dollars in cash lying around. I can pay Leticia. Oh, oh boy. This is beautiful. Can she, does she want to come up with another word to replace stale at the end? This is very exciting, and uh, I'm enjoying it. All right, let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi there. Louise, the mask lady from Boca. Hey, was that noise you taking the mask down? to talk on the phone because there was some noise. No, I'm trying to make some breakfast. Oh, okay. Um, I have, uh, yeah, I have to go out early. 
Uh, I am, um, of course, so happy with uh, the President Trump situation, but I'm very annoyed at you, Brian, for hanging up on Greg, too. Poor guy. We don't have many calls from Democrats as it is, and, and here you didn't even give him a chance to speak. Well, excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on, Maskley. Oh, hold, hold, well, maybe, maybe not. Listen, listen. I know this is hard for you to believe, and it is for me too, actually, and it's kind of insulting, but not everybody sets their alarm for 6 a.m. and catches every utterance on this program. Greg, too, called up with his liberal garbage, and I'm doing fine, and I, he asked me a question. I started to answer it. He said, that's irrelevant, and I said, the only thing that's going to be in, uh, irrelevant is you when I hang up on you, and he said, hang up on me. I don't care. As a host of a... Hey, hold on, hold on. As the host of a radio show... Once a caller says that, you gotta you gotta hang up on him. I mean, you know, we're not here to beg for callers and 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 everything. And when a caller challenges you like that, you have no choice but to hang up on him. So no, I'm not gonna let that fly. You gotta have you know, come on. I I, I mean, what a challenge. What am I supposed to do? Please don't. Please, Greg. Please. What do you think this is? The Joyce Kaufman show where we're dying for calls. But you know he kids around. I don't think he meant it in that way. Well, he should have chosen his words better. He should have chosen his words better. Oh, you should give him a chance to call back. Listen, listen, listen. We take the phone calls screenless on this program. No one answers the phones. When you call in, I put you on hold. You get on. Anyone who's listening to this program can reach me anytime I'm on the air. I'm the easiest person to reach in the world. It's easier to get a hold of me than your your spouse, probably. You know, so no. I, but I'm not going to sit here when when and, and be insulted like that by a caller. He, he, what am I supposed to do? Please, please don't hang. Are we de so desperate for Greg too? When I say we, I mean the audience and me. Come on. All right. All right. All right. Goodbye. Thanks for the call. I mean, come on. What am I supposed to do? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Give me a break. You, you know, and, and Louise the Mask Lady, any time that I have any type of conflict with a caller, do you notice how she immediately bonds with that person? Like if Richie and I have a blowout, oh, Richie, or duh, or uh, uh, Greg, too, who's, you know, oh, Gre poor Greg, too. She just immediately connects and tries to bond with anyone I have conflict with on this show. Uh, yeah. she, she's, <coughs> she's a strange, strange woman. Uh, I've been bad enough to wear the mask all the time. There's, there's something wrong. You know, I saw there's a there's a story in the news today. One of the guys from uh, Yellowstone got kicked off a plane because he wouldn't sit next to someone wearing a mask on a plane. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, President Trump, we know, knows how to make a lot of money, right? <coughs> so he knows he's going to get his money back. They have to pay him nine percent interest rate. No. Get yeah. come on. Wait, wait a minute. Where'd you hear that at? I didn't hear that. Oh yeah, I looked it up. Uh, the, the state of New York has to pay nine percent. Uh, so when the government. Uh, Where, wait, wait a minute. Where'd you Where'd you send that to me? So you're telling me that the state of New York will have to pay Trump nine percent interest on his half a billion dollars they're going to hold. That's correct. That's what I. That's what I, I, I looked up. And it, 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 that's, it, 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 that's beautiful. That's more than a mortgage rate. I mean, you don't get that kind of money in the bank, no matter how much money you have. What's what? How much money is that? What's not? You know, and like, I, how do you factor the interest? Is that like over a year, a week, a month? How does that work? How much money will that be? That, that I, I don't know how, it's, it's probably yearly, but I imagine you're going to have to pay something. You're going to go to court right away and, and, and appeal. First of all, the whole idea of why the hell they have to pay $468 million to appeal a case, which seems very unconstitutional, and you don't hear, you don't hear any, any of the uh, Republicans saying anything. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is interesting. So Trump's going to... Make money off of this. That's what President Trump does. He makes money. You know, that's that's a, that's that. 
You've got my cell phone number because you text me all the time. Text me whatever you found that on. I, that's, a, that's an issue. I, I lost my phone. You have my phone number. If you could send me your number again. Do you have something to write with? Yes, I do. I'll give it to you right now. You ready? Good. My cell phone number. Okay, you sure you want to do this over the No, I, I, I've seen how far you got to... No, I'm not going to give you my cell phone number over the air. That's crazy. I don't know if I have your number, Doug, saved in my phone. If I, find, if I have your number saved in my phone book, I'll text you. All right? When you have a uh, caller ID? Um, I don't know if I put you in my phone book. I'll have to go and check. I'm talking about when I call the radio. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not going to reveal anything about the inner workings of this radio program. I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. All right, take care, Doug. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, you know, um, I had to – I don't know how, how people get my cell phone number. There are so many listeners of this program that somehow find my phone number. I get text messages constantly. I don't know who people are. And uh, Conservative Doug is one of those people. But, uh, oh, my goodness. You know, I had to – I changed my number a, uh, a couple years back because of Liberal Al the John. He had my, and he was constantly doing things with my number. And then he, he did not know I changed my number until like a year ago. He called in. So whoever has my old number had been getting text messages from Al the John for like two, three years. They probably wonder, what is this all about? All right, listen, we're going to uh, take a break in a few minutes, but when we get back, we'll continue on this celebration of uh, Trump having the money. And, and I, I want to hear this. If anyone knows what Doug was talking about, that Trump is going to earn interest on this money when New York's holding it, I'd like to know about that. That's an interesting thing. And uh, so that this is actually a way and a good thing. He's going to make money off of this. Now, I want to tell you all uh, the free shipping offer uh, continues at MyPillow.com site-wide on any item you buy, no matter how large or small, no matter how light, no matter how heavy, free shipping with our promo code Kane at checkout, of course, K-A-N-E. But right now, there's, um, and by the way, you get the special deals, the special discounts on top of the free shipping. Right now, there's an incredible sale going on on the MyPillow uh, sheets, the lowest prices in MyPillow history on all of their sheets. The flannel, the Giza Dream Sheets, and the Percal Sheets. And uh, the, the uh, flannel sheets, which my wife and I have a couple sets of these, are 50% off. The 100% Giza Cotton Dream Sheets are just $59.98 for the queen. Wow, I paid over $100 for mine, and they're worth that. I mean, what a discount. And the Percal Sheets are just $39.98 for the queen. We got a set of the Percal Sheets because uh, I wanted to try them out. And we have them on our guest bed. They are spectacular. They are spectacular. So uh, the bed sheet sh sale going on right now, the lowest prices in my pillow history with our promo code Kane. But again, you can get you get the free shipping with our promo code Kane, K A N E at checkout on everything site wide. All right, we'll take our first break of the second hour. It's the Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian. Our number toll free one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. 888-465-2631. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Okay, where are we going? Yeah, I don't know about this Trump earning interest. I don't see anything about him earning interest. I don't see anything on that. Like 
It's not bail money. He wasn't arrested. This is civil. I don't see anything online about interest. It's not bail money. It's a, if anybody knows about that, let me know. All I wear are vans. I don't always wear the slip-ons, but um, the reason I wear vans is I have a uh, curved spine, scoliosis, scoliosis, and um, the only shoes that I can find that don't that that don't give me back problems are Vans. <clears throat> I'm using my phone to live stream with, so I can't check anything. All right, we are celebrating the humiliation of Letitia James today when Trump pays the half a billion dollar bond. Just money lying around, lying around Mar-a-Lago. Isn't that nice? That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. All right, so um, Ronna McDaniel, this this whole NMS, NBC, NBC dust up. You know, they hired McDaniel to be, uh, I guess, a paid contributor at MSNBC, and she went on... Uh, meet the press yesterday for an interview, and it's just blown everything up. I mean, they're just having a fit over there. And, uh, you know, I knew it, it, she's not even really a Republican. She's one of these uniparty Liz Cheney types, you know, Mitt Romney's niece and everything. And they just don't like Republicans over there. They like fake Republicans like Michael Steele, who says Democrat things, you know. And... um after her interview yesterday, they've already suspended her. They're not going to be using her on MSNBC. I don't know if they still have to pay her, if she gets paid per appearance, if she's just got a yearly salary. A lot of these paid pundits and contributors make a lot of money. They make seven, not six, seven figures a year, some of them. Okay? And those that make six figures, some of them make in the high six figures for those things. It's a very high-paying job. But the whole idea that the other side might be represented, even though she's part of the Never Trumper crowd, um, they just couldn't have it. And I, I'll play a little bit of the interview that she did with Kristen Welker. But the big takeaway from it is uh, Chuck Todd, who was a guest on Meet the Press, and he just laid in to Meet the Press and the management and everything for having her on as a guest. And, you know... Chuck Todd, which, and I'll play the, uh, the, the, the thing in a minute. What Chuck Todd is doing is trying to get fired by NBC News. He's under contract. I mean, I want you to think about this. He was fired from his hosting job on Meet the Press. And Kristen Welker, who's well-connected with the Obamas and all, was put in his place. And they humiliate him by regularly having him as a guest on his own show, hosted by a woman. This is part of this Me Too Harvey Weinsteining of film and television and news. You see this all the time. You know, they brought back CSI in Las Vegas a couple years ago. I went to watch it. William Peterson, who started the show, is a guest star on his own show. Right, and they have a woman star. It's bizarre. I watched one episode and I was out. And this humiliation of uh, Chuck Todd—they fire him from Meet the Press in a very high-profile firing, 
And then they constantly humiliate this guy by having him come in and be a guest on his own show. And he's embarrassed and pissed off, so he's trying to get fired. And uh, I hope they don't fire him because that's what he wants. And he's a jerk. He was very arrogant. You know, he, his face looks like a bird. That's why he grows that goatee. He thinks it covers up the bird look on his face. And he was one of these guys that when he would either, when he was hosting that show, when he would either make a statement or ask a question, he would lean back in his chair, do this weird thing with his lips and make a noise like, and then sit back and silence him with a smirk on his face because he thought he said something brilliant. And then the guest and the viewers are supposed to stay, stand there in brief silence to ponder the brilliance that came out of this bird face's mouth, okay? So I never liked this guy, he's a, and he's a liberal jerk on top of it. But so anyway, uh, the hostess of Meet the Press, Kristen Welker, she does her interview with Ronna McDaniel, who's a, who's a never-Trumper jerk, and then they come back with this panel, and uh, Chuck Todd just, just has a meltdown trying to get fired by NBC News. We do with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid... Okay. Now, Jen Psaki not only negotiated her deal with NBC while she was still working at the White House, they did her on. They had her on all the interviews. No one was upset. But Chuck Todd, he's upset that they hired Ronna McDaniel. What business of it is his who they hire? He works there. It's not my business who they hire here at the radio station. Do you, do, can you imagine me? Can you imagine me getting off the air and going into management's office and or going on the air? Oh, how dare they hire that? Who am I? I mean, you know. So this guy here, what, what a, an amazing! But everyone's missing. He wants to get fired. He wants out of that contract. Elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation. Because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. Well, I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Um, she wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for her. So she has, she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? Do they ever ask this of Jin Saki? And who's that idiot in the afternoon, the fake Republican that used to work for John McCain? And what about Michael Steele? He used to be the chair of the RNC, like Ronna McDaniel. I never remember them questioning whether or not you could believe him or not. Well, once at the RNC, she did say that, hey, I'm speaking for the party. I get that. That's part of the job. So what about here? I, I will say this. I think your interview... Uh, did a good job of exposing, I think, many of the contradictions. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this. Because yeah, because they're not journalists, because she has a, a differing opinion. Over the last six years, mm -hmm. have been met with gaslighting, mm -hmm. have been met with character assassination. Uh. So it is, it, you know, that's where... You know, you can hear in his voice, this is not how he normally talks. It's a little high-pitched. I hear a lot of nerv nervousness, a lot of anxiety. Begin here. And so um, when NBC made the decision to give her NBC News' credibility, you got to ask yourself, what does she bring NBC News? And when we make deals like this, and I've been at this company a long time, you're doing it for access. Access to audience. Sometimes it's access to an individual. Mm -hmm. um, and we can have a de journalistic ethics debate about that. And I, it, I'm oh, my goodness. Willing to have that debate. Oh. If you told me we were hiring her as a technical advisor to the we're hiring he he doesn't he's a he's he's a hired employee he doesn't he's not hired and, and and he's been demoted he may have had some calls and who got hired when he was hosting meet the press maybe but he's he doesn't make any decisions now he doesn't even decide what if he's going to be they just call him and say hey tomorrow you're going to be on tv at such and such a time be there and he shows up cuz he's under contract Attention. i think that would be certainly um, defensible if you told me we're we're talking to her, but let's let's see how she does in some interviews and maybe vet her with actual journalists inside the network. See, journalist inside the network. 
Can someone name a journalist that works for NBC News? Is there a journalist? To me, you got a bunch of propagandists that just regurgitate whatever they're fed to regurgitate, except Chuck Todd, who's gone rogue here to try to get out of his contract with NBC. If it's a two-way, mm. what she can bring to the network. So I do think, unfortunately, this interview is always going to be looked through the prism of who is she speaking for. Oh. oh, my goodness. He's a smile talker. When he says something, he smiles after. All right. So I hope that they don't fire him because he's a jerk. He's obviously suffering. I mean, who wouldn't be? He, would, if you think, I want you to think about this. You, um, you, you're, you've got a big job at your company. You're in management at your company. They fire you from that job, but you're still in the contract and being paid. They hire someone new that used to be beneath you to replace you, but they call you in every once in a while to work and do uh, just regular work around the office. Would that be humiliating? Absolutely. He's like the guy that got cut from the team and now he's got to pick up the jock straps in the locker room. That's what Chuck Todd's doing, picking up the jock. Although, with that crew over there, there's not a lot of jock straps around. I don't know. What do women wear instead of jock straps? I don't know. But that's what's going on here. So please, NBC News, if you're listening, don't fire him. Let this jerk suffer. And you know, you know what? And another thing about it is, he's going to get worse. He's going to try harder and harder to get fired. He wants out of that country. Maybe he's seen what Tucker Carlson is doing and say, hey, I want to do that. You're, nobody wants to hear what you have to say. You're not marketable. Okay? Just like Don Lemon. He was on Twitter for one minute and he got, he's done. At he could, he, people are not interested in the liberal viewpoint. They can get that everywhere. All right, we'll take a break for the bottom of the hour and be right back. It's the Steve King Show with Brian I hit the wrong pot. Well, let's talk about the election. If Harry can be elected to a second term, it would be, quote, to free those charged and convicted of crimes related to January 6th. Do you support that? I want to be very clear. The violence that happened on January 6th is unacceptable. It oh, my goodness. represent our country. It certainly does not represent my party. We should not be attacking the Capitol. We should not be having violence. I said it that day. I put a statement out that day that this is not acceptable. If you attacked our Capitol and you have been, have you, and you've been convicted, then that should stay. So then, but to the question though, do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do not this? think people who committed violent acts on January. Hey guys, if you've not done it, order your Mighty Maga Lion. Go to MightyMagaLion.com and uh, there's a link in the description of the video. If you order more than one, you get a discount. This is the only Trump-inspired merchandise wearing the Maga hat and is available exclusively through me at MightyMagaLion.com. But again, there is a link in the description of the video. MightyMagaLion.com. MightyMagaLion.com. I got a shipment going out today and if you order... Uh, this morning, yours will get mailed out today with the rest that I'm sending out today. MightyMagaLion.com. Order yours. No better way to watch a Trump rally than cuddling your Mighty Maga Lion. No doubt about it. Indian 
Well, well, you guys will have to call me about that. That's section 28. I don't know. Yes, this is a Tron T-shirt, Flynn's Arcade, and uh, I saw on the live stream this morning. I rode, I wore this shirt when I uh, rode that new Tron roller coaster here in Florida. Which is a pretty intense roller. It's a very short roller coaster, but I'm not a roller coaster person. But I did ride that one. It doesn't go upside down or have big drops, but it's fast. Oh my goodness. I've got a Miss Pac-Man machine at home that my wife got me for Christmas. Not this past Christmas, but the one before that. I'm a Miss Pac-Man guy. Asteroids is good. I've got uh, Asteroids. I've got the uh, Atari version of Asteroids I like. We'll be back after this commercial. Space Invaders. Yeah, my uh, Miss Pac-Man machine has um, Miss Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Galaga, which I love, Galaga. That's like, after Miss Pac-Man, Galaga is my favorite. The arcade versions, because it's a stand-up arcade version. <clears throat> I had the Pac-Man Fever full-length album and all the different songs. Do the Donkey Kong was one. Pac-Man Fever. All right. Welcome back, one and all. And, of course, on this Monday, we're celebrating that President Trump has he doesn't have $500 million. He's got lying around. He's paying Letitia's fine. So the, it's, it's really amazing how intolerant the tolerant left are. They're so tolerant, they won't tolerate anyone who dare disagree with them. And Ronna McDaniel is... is She's like Pence. Nobody likes her that's MAGA Does, and never have. And they, they hire this never Trumper and they're having a fit over there. And I've never really watched her speak too much. But there was a lot of talk about how much money she used on, on fashion and everything. And I, I don't know, did she get Botox and things? I'm watching her uh, interview on Meet the Press yesterday, Ronna McDaniel, and... The way her lips are, she looks like I've run either somebody that's had way too much Botox and lip filler or someone that spent a life of drinking. And you know how alcoholism affects someone's mouth and their lips become, I don't know. But anyway, this is uh, Ronna McDaniel talking to uh, Christian Welker on Meet the Press yesterday about Trump pardoning the J6ers, many of which are still awaiting trial. Well, let's talk about the election now. Donald Trump says one of his first acts, if he is reelected to a second term, would be, quote, to free those charged and convicted of crimes related to January 6th. Do you support that? I want to be very clear. The violence that happened on January 6th 
is unacceptable. It doesn't represent our country. It certainly does not represent my party. We should not be attacking the Capitol. We should not be having violence. I said it that day. I put a statement out that day that this is not acceptable. Oh. If you attacked our Capitol and you have been have you and you've been convicted, then that should stay. So then, but to the question though, do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do not convicted? think people who committed violent acts on January 6th should be freed. So you disagree with that? He's been saying that for months. I, Rana, why not speak out earlier? Why just speak out about that now? When you're the RNC. Oh, they're why, it, 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 her tell, why not, why speak about that now? Hey, she has all these dramatic pauses and weird inflections, Kristen Welker. Speak out earlier. Why just speak out about that now? When you're the RNC chair, you, you kind of take one for the whole team, right? Now I get to be a little bit more myself, right? This is what I believe. I don't think violence should be in our political discourse. Okay, what a witch. What a witch Ronna McDaniel is. So what she is saying is that if you support the pardoning of the J6ers, you support violence? Because she said, now, now, now I can come out and be against violence, which is implying that before she was speaking in favor of violence? Be a little bit more myself, right? This is what I believe. I don't think violence should be in our political mm -hmm. discourse, mm -hmm. Republican or Democrat. And I disagree with that. I agree with him on a whole host of other things. Let's close the border. Let's make sure we have good incomes for people. Let's make sure we do a lot of great things. But on that point, I don't think we should be freeing people who violently attacked Capitol Hill police officers and, and, and attacked the Capitol. Okay. Now, I know a lot of people may be saying to themselves, who cares what Rhonda McDaniel thinks? And I'll tell you why. Uh, this is important. She's almost like um, a captured enemy agent, like we found a spy and, and, and they're confessing. And the reason you want to listen to jerks like this, the spy who came out of the cold or whatever you want to call it, you get to hear what the never Trumpers think out loud in the Republican Party that are working against this president. Now... I'm going to share something with you. This, th th there was an amazing uh, comment made by Emerald Robinson over the weekend. And, you know, there's another resignation from uh, the Republicans in the House, right? In the, in the middle of the next month. And there's, we're going to have an empty seat there. He is resigning a week or two after the deadline for, uh, uh, for a special election in that district. And Emerald Robinson said over the weekend, now Emerald Robinson, if you remember, she was at One American News. I'm pretty sure she was at Newsmax for a while. I don't know what happened. And now she's with Lindell TV. I like Emerald Robinson. You guys like Emerald Robinson? She's very good. She looks like she's about eight feet tall. I've never met her, but she looks very tall. And uh, she said that uh, there are, there's, there's word of other Republican resignations from the House. And she said that they have a plan to turn the House over to the Democrats through these resignations. They got rid of Santos. These resignations and retirements, they're going to turn the House over to the Democrats. This is Emerald Robinson, which means Hakeem Jeffries would become the Speaker. Even though it'd be temporary, that means the Democrats would have the House, the Senate, and the presidency. That's all they need to get everything done they want. And believe me, they won't be like, oh, well, we only have a three-seat majority. We can't do anything. They'll steamroll everything through that. If you have a one-seat majority, you do that. But not these guys, not these wimpy Republicans. Mike Johnson, what a jerky loser he turned out to be. But what Emerald Robinson said the plan is with that is to pass legislation to stop Trump from being able to uh, be on the ballot in November. And, and I'm not saying they're going to be successful with that, but that's, that's the mindset that you are dealing with here, okay? You're dealing with sick, twisted, and very desperate people, okay? Sick, twisted, and very desperate people. And they will stop at nothing to stop Trump. And these, these people that are working against Trump, whether it's Letitia or Fannie Willis or Ronna McDaniel or any of the others, you could just name any of them. 
they all think that what they are doing is for the betterment of our country. They think the fact, I'm like, let, I look, let me pull this up. The um, real clear politics polls in the battleground states. Listen to this. So we got the battleground states. It's Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Nevada. Trump is leading in every single battleground state against Biden. Um, he's leading by 1.2 in Wisconsin, 5.4 in Arizona, 5 points in Georgia, 3.7 in Michigan, uh, half a point in Pennsylvania, 5 points in North Carolina, and 4.3 in Nevada. This is the real clear politics average. That's amazing. Okay? And they think... When I say they, I'm talking about the Uniparty, the Republican, the Democrat establishment, their media allies and the donors and everything else. They think that we don't know what's best for us. They think something's wrong with us. They think something's wrong with this country that we are still supporting Trump. They don't see a path to defeat him. So they're trying to, as always, come up with other schemes to stop him. First, they thought they were going to bankrupt him. They thought they were going to bankrupt him. And uh, with his huge fine, they take all this cash, take his property, he have no money to fund his campaign. Then what happens? The Trump family took over the RNC. I want you to think about it. That witch that I was playing the, the bit before who was attacking Trump on Meet the Press, Ronna McDaniel, she was running the RNC not that long ago. Now Lara Trump's running the joint. So they can take this half a billion dollars from him in New York today. The RNC will fund this campaign. I mean, I want you guys to think about what's happened in the last few months. President Trump defeated the machines of both the Democrat and the Republican Party to win the nomination in all these primary states. And in many of these states, New Hampshire, I was talking to Steve about this on Friday. In New Hampshire in particular, they spent a year, not a couple of months, a year in New Hampshire because it's a crossover state where Democrats can vote in the Republican primary. They spent a year trying to get Democrats to vote against Trump by voting for another Republican. They failed. So he beat the entire machine of both political parties and has won the nomination. It's not official yet because we haven't had the convention, but it's, it's done, right? The, the, the task of that is absolutely amazing. At the same time that he did that, President Trump took over the RNC, fired Ronna McDaniel, which she admitted in that interview that he got rid of her. He's taken over the entire financial apparatus of the Republican Party at the same time that the Democrats are taking half a billion dollars in cash from him with this Letitia James case. These are miracles that have happened. Absolute miracles. And they're still looking for ways to stop him. They, they, they have no respect for him, and they have no respect for you and me. And, and what Donald Trump has done in the last few months, since first primary to now, with everything they've been doing against him, and still he has the half a billion dollars in cash to pay Letitia today, is nothing short of a miracle. Nothing short of it. Now, if you're on hold, stand by. We're going to take our last break of this hour. We'll come back with more calls and uh, more to discuss as well. Our number, one 465 2631 It's a toll-free call no matter where you're listening. 888 465 2631 My name is Brian Craig. This is The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. Back after this. The Cold. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, guys.
There's a special look and fit your personal style for your entire home or office. The newest innovation is Soft Step Attached Underlayment, made from 100% recycled materials that affords warmth and comfort underfoot and superior sound reduction. It's so for the perfect balance of style, softness, and simplicity, it's always Cortex. So visit Wheel for You in Jupiter at the corner of Indian Town Road and Ultimate Drive. <coughs> Oh, it's beautiful. This is just amazing. <clears throat> oh. It's a great day, guys. Just a great day. All right, now if you or someone you know and love are suffering with neuropathy, you know it's it's living torture, but there is help at Lighthouse Medical Center. You know, Lighthouse Medical Center in Pompano can help you no matter where you're located, even if you can't make it into their office. They understand, okay? If you have neuropathy, it's not easy for you to get around, or maybe you're out of town or even out of state. They can still help you. You know, there's symptoms from neuropathy. Steve had them all, and they're gone now. The numbness, the pain, the burning, the tingling in the hands and feet, Muscle weakness, dizziness, the feeling of pins and needles in the hands and feet. Some have no feeling whatsoever. All those will be gone with their incredible treatment. Let me give you the number. When you call, make sure you mention you heard about them on the Steve Kane Show so you can take advantage of the no-charge consultation that Steve Kane listeners have access to. 754-222-6642. 754-222-6642. And if you missed the number... Just go to their website, lighthousemedicalcenter.com. All right. We are celebrating President Trump has the half a billion dollars in cash lying around to pay off Letitia. Very exciting. Sorry, Letitia. Can't seize anything today. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Once. Twice. I hear all kinds of noise in the background, but... Uh, Obviously, they're, they're busy. All right, so this is what President Trump posted on True Social on Friday, in case you missed it, because, you know, I noticed the news over the weekend, and then I was up really, really early this morning watching the news, really, really early, and they're, they're, they're calling Trump broke, and he doesn't have the... They're acting like this didn't happen. But this is what Trump posted to Truth Social. Through hard work, talent, and luck, and he wrote everything in all caps. Every letter of every word is in caps, which means, you know, you're yelling. Through hard work, talent, and luck, I currently have almost $500 million in cash. 
a substantial amount of which I intended to use in my campaign for president. The often overturned political hack judge on the rigged and corrupt AG case, where I have done nothing wrong, knew this, wanted to take it away from me, and that is why he came up with this shocking number, which, coupled with his crazy interest demands, is approximately $454 million. So he's got the money, and he's going to pay it. Oh, beautiful. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, it's going to be one of those days. See, these. this is the liberal response, guys. The liberal response, which is fine with me. You know, the, the liberal, you know, we Greg, too, called up in the first hour around 630. He, he sounded hysterical. He was not happy. And then you hear what I'm dealing with here with the last couple of calls I took. Liberals. They're, this is not the way it was supposed to be. This is what, this is what happens. When, you know what I'd like to hear, though, from a, from a Democrat? Tell me Joe Biden's doing a good job. When's the last time you heard a Democrat say that Joe Biden's doing a good job with anything? Been a long time, if ever. Now, um, Fannie Willis, who's completely insane, she gave an interview over the weekend. Let me pull this up. Man. Fannie Willis on CNN, the Clinton News Network. Wow. This is amazing. She's not embarrassed. You know, um, you remember the late Jerry Springer, Jerry Springer who died, right? Jerry Springer, um, before he was famous, was the mayor of Cincinnati. And some of you may know this. Do you know what, ha do you know what happened, Mike, to Jerry Springer? Jerry Springer was mayor of Cincinnati, Ohio, and was forced out of office. Do you know what he did? He hired prostitutes. And he paid for the prostitutes with personal checks. So the prostitutes have evidence that he hired them because they have the checks with his signature written out to, I don't know, they're, 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 it must be their legal names. <laughs> and he got, Fannie Willis did the equivalent of that, but with government money. She, a gigolo is a male prostitute. Remember American Gigolo, Richard Gere movie? She hires a gigolo, pays him almost a million dollars to what? We know what. And she's not embarrassed by that? You know how embarrassing it is when a guy hires a hooker and he gets caught and they put him on billboards and stuff? It's even worse for women because women... They can walk out, a, a woman can go anywhere in this country and within 60 seconds, no matter what she looks like, can find a man to have sex with her, right? So for a woman to be found out that she's actually paying for sex, that's got to be like, but not Fanny. She's not embarrassed. Like my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I've done. Oh. You know, I guess my greatest crime is... I had a relationship with a man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing. Any you, you paid him a million dollars almost, 700 and something thousand dollars. That's not embarrassing? I wonder how, other, how many other kept men she's had. She's a sugar mama. Um, and I know that I have not done anything that's illegal. Okay. Just because something is not illegal doesn't mean it's immoral. Remember Herman Cain? When he was running for president... Um, Fox News found out he was a sugar daddy, and, and he was so popular. We, we had, we did, Steve and I did an appearance with Herman Cain when he was running for president at Wings Plus. And I'm here to tell you, there were more people who turned out to see Herman Cain, at that time he was so big, than even showed up for Governor DeSantis when we had him there. That's how big he was. And then they found out he was a sugar daddy. They uh, went and interviewed his uh, sugar baby, and they put it on television. That was the end of Herman Cain. He was out, out of politics. And by the way, Herman Cain paid his sugar baby with his own personal money. Not government money, because he didn't have a government job. He was a private guy in private business. Fannie Willis did the same thing Herman Cain did with government money, 
She's not embarrassed. She's not ashamed. What's going on? We were writing responsive briefs. We were still doing the case in the way that it needed to be done. Mm. We've been slowed down at all. Um, I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train. Mm. Oh, the train. Yeah, that's right. It is coming. It's called the Trump train. You're on the air. Brian, what's hey, Brian, what's up? Hey, Brian, how are you? You know, um, watching President Trump and his and his his, uh, his thought process and his thinking and his strategic moves absolutely brilliant. You know, but I'm starting to wonder, especially at the presidential level, we're watching one of the most brilliant political leaders, I, certainly in our time. Absolutely. I'm starting to wonder, is this one of the most brilliant political leaders we've ever had on the planet? I mean, with everything stacked against him, it's just absolutely astounding the way it's win after win after win. Because he came, because he comes from the private sector. You know, there's this new Ghostbusters movie is out, right? Ghost, this new Ghostbusters movie. The I, I'm sure it's garbage. Go and watch the first Ghostbusters. It's a, it's a great movie. It's brilliantly written. And there's a scene in the first Ghostbusters that I love. And I didn't pick, I didn't notice this when I was a kid, but when I go back and watch Ghostbusters now, I see it. You know, they all get fired from the um, uh, university, Dan Aykroyd and all that. They get fired and, and they say, well, we're going to have to go out and get jobs in the private sector. And one of them said, Dan Aykroyd, he says, the private sector, I've worked there. You haven't. In the private sector, they expect results. And it's, you know, and when you have somebody uh, in the past, uh, like we've had, uh, you know, they, they are, they're all government workers their whole life. President Trump is the first president we've had that came from the private sector fully, okay? So, you know, he gets results done. He's used to having to accomplish things. I mean, in the, coming up with the, with the money for this in cash, that had to be shocking on Friday for Letitia James and all the rest. Absolutely, absolutely. I actually thought, boy, you know, I was going to pull this off, but... Uh... And the other thing was, was taking over, like we said before, taking over the RNC, putting Lord Trump in there as co-chair with the other guy. Brilliant move. Brilliant move. Absolutely. This guy, this guy is just, uh, I, you know, they talk about who's got the highest IQ ever for, for that's been in the, in, in the Oval Office. I think it's got to be Donald Trump. I, even, I think even the left has got to admit, this guy is unbelievably sharp. And, I mean, yeah. I mean, when, when he posted on True Social on Friday... When I saw that he posted that, I was like, I, I was in shock. I was, you know, and, and the media all weekend long, the best way to describe the way the media have been reacting, even this morning, they're salivating over the idea that uh, Letitia James is going to seize something that Trump owns. And they're just so excited about this, it, totally ignoring the fact that he announced on Friday he has the money. It's stunning. I mean, he's just, at, at so many different levels, he excels intellectually that it's, it's really something to watch. I hope people appreciate what we're seeing. We're watching a brilliant guy at work defeating people with, 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 that seem to have overwhelming odds against him, yet he continues to do it. Ex and, exactly. The move and uh, oh. whatever you go to do, go do something else because you were terrible in the RNC. Absolutely. I think the next most real president we've had is a distant second to him. I really do. Um, There's no one. There is there. There has never been someone as uh, accomplished as this as president of the United States. And what I mean by that, yeah. mo what, see what I don't think any of us realize this until Trump was in office. What all the other presidents are are spokesmodels. There's there's spokesmodels. That's all. And they fit whatever mold the country wants to see at the time. You know, like AOC, who got casted. It's like a casting. And all they do is get briefed so that they can come out and sound like they're in charge. And they're not running anything. And Donald Trump is the first president that was actually running the show. And they can't handle that. Hey, listen, I appreciate the call. we got a break for the top of the hour. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show. Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. Our number is toll-free, 888 465 2631 888-465-2631. It's a toll-free call no matter where you are listening. My name is Brian Craig. We'll take our break for the top of the hour and be back right after this. WSFS 104.3.
Possibly under consideration to be Donald Trump. Welcome. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, guys. We'll be back in just a few seconds here. We'll be back in 25 seconds. Any plane the president flies on is, has the designation of Air Force One. It could be a biplane. If he's on it, it's Air Force. Like when George W. Bush landed on that aircraft carrier, 
<clears throat> you know, even though it was a naval plane, that's like Air Force One at the time. Here we go. All right, the third hour of celebration has begun. That's right, if you're on hold, stand by. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. Steve Kane joining us. Hey, Steve. It's an exciting day, no question of that. Yeah, Trump said he's got the money. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, um... But that's not only half the story. And I was trying to get you over the weekend again. You're hard to reach every weekend. I know. The question is, who put up the money? He did. He's got the money. He said he's got the money. No, but, but he... He had the money. No. No, he had it. He had it. He didn't. Nobody gave it to him. He had it. He had it. Up. He had it. He just. No one gave it to him. It's his money that he had in the bank. Yeah, it's hard to get me on the weekends because when I I have to report in, you know, Friday afternoons, they don't give my phone back until I leave Monday morning. So you know, but um, yeah, he he said he had the money on hand and just sitting in the bank. Yeah. He didn't, no one gave it to him. It's his money. Seemed to be struggling to get it. No, the media wanted us to think he was struggling, and he just didn't let us know that he had it until Friday. And then he's, he has the money laying around. Yeah. It was confusing. The other thing, the other big, huge story. Well, it, it is because the media don't want you to know that he had the money on hand. They're trying to act like he's in trouble. Well, that's going to catch up with him, obviously, when he... Listen, when there's, a, when there's a guy hanging on for dear life on the edge of the building, he's just got the tips of his fingers there, he's, he's hanging there every last minute of life. That's what these never-Trumpers are like. So they're just trying to prolong their delusion for as long as possible. And the other thing, which is a huge story, I hope it doesn't get lost in the, in the shuffle today, but the... the, the Big conflict at the border, unlike anything we've seen so far, where the the Mexican mm. <laughs> I guess the Mexican army they just ran over. Her. Yeah, uh, I mean that was really frightening to watch. That that was actually Thursday. That when that when they they uh, the the new Mexican army they're 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 plain clothes. They're like the VC in Vietnam. They don't wear uniforms. And one guy, he had his back to the camera. He was built like a tank. Yeah. Do you know what, what was that human? I don't know. I don't know, but I know. I know this: they're, they're all going back to Mexico when Trump's back in November. Hope it's just... Yeah. Oh yeah. It'll be that easy. Listen. President would be that. It, it'll be that easy. It'll be that easy. Did you see this? Um, Marco Rubio was on one of the Sunday shows, and he's on the short list to be vice president. And and Marco Rubio, he's really grown up since the first campaign. I like him. He's 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 one of our senators here, and he's very good. Yeah, I interviewed him during the elections. You guys may remember he was here on the show, and uh, he's got a sense of humor. He was running against that idiot Democrat. I forgot her name, but. Uh, Anyway, listen to this. This is uh, this week, and he's being interviewed by Jonathan Carl, who's one of these ABC News reporter jerks. He's been there for years, and he's um, trying to talk Marco Rubio into not running. See, Marco Rubio being Cuban, that makes him Latino, that makes him Hispanic, and that really, you know, they're in a panic that he might have a Hispanic guy running with him. Trump has to worry about Hispanics, and I think he's got them already. Oh, he's got everybody already. That's the problem. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. So this is Jonathan Carl trying to talk Marco Rubio out of becoming uh, the running mate for Donald Trump. Look, I want to turn to politics. There was some reporting this week that you were possibly under consideration to be Donald Trump's running mate. I don't put a lot of stock in this reporting right now, or we're, we're early, uh, but you said it would be an honor to be offered a spot in his ticket, really? Yeah, I think anyone who's offered the opportunity to serve this country as vice president should be honored by the opportunity to do it if you're in public service. I'm in the Senate because I want to serve the country. Being vice president is an important way to serve the country. But I'm also very clear, I've never talked to Donald Trump. I've never talked to anybody on his team or family or inner circle about vice president. That's a decision he's going to make. He has plenty of really good people to pick from. I mean, the reason why I ask is, I mean, look what happened to the last guy. I mean, he's trying, listen, what, they don't have the last guy. Yeah, have you seen his house? It's like bigger than Mar-a-Lago, uh, Pence. And so now, now Jonathan Carl's trying to talk. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do, he's in a panic. 
plenty of really good people to pick from. I mean, the reason why I ask is, I mean, look what happened to the last guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, Bob stormed to the Capitol, literally calling to hang. Mm. And Trump defended those chants of hanging Mike Pence. No, 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 he didn't. As President of the United States, this country was safer. It was more prosperous. We had we had relations, for example, in a part of the world that I care about, called the Western Hemisphere, that that, that were very strong. We had a lot of good things done there. I think the country and the world was a better place when he was president. And it was, and I would love to see him return to the White House in comparison to the guy who's there now, Joe Biden, who's been a disaster economically. Look, look at the world. Every single day we wake up to a new crisis, to a new conflict. Mm. On fire since the time Joe Biden took over, Afghanistan's gone down, Ukraine has been invaded. Now the Philippines and the Chinese are on the verge of something bad happening every single day, not to mention the threats to Taiwan. We have, we have this blow up in Haiti going on mm. on hemisphere. We wake up every single day, terrorist attacks, but, but, 9 but million people but, across the border. I mean, I mean, that's you're, what matters you're not to suggesting me. that's all happening because of Biden. Right? Absolutely, but, I have. Yeah. Look, Absolutely, I'm suggesting it happening because of Biden. He's president, and his weakness, and his... Just because of Biden that, that, that Russia invaded Ukraine? Absolutely. It's because of Biden that, that, that Haiti... Okay, look, look, look... Absolutely. I mean, look, Putin is sitting there saying, these guys can't even stand up to the Taliban, and they have to fly people hanging off the wings of these airplanes. Now's the time to go. It, it, and, and I, mean, by Trump's, way, I mean, Trump's the one saying that, that suggesting that, that there should be a deal that give, effectively gives... Uh, Putin, what he wants in Ukraine. But let, let, can we take well, that's point? not true. He, what he has said is he wants the conflict to end, which is striking to me that people, why wouldn't people want peace? Can, what I've said is there is going to be a negotiated. So Russia's not going to take all of Ukraine. Can, can, can we, and can, Ukraine's can, not going to push Russia back to the where it was in 2014. I want Ukraine to have the upper hand in any negotiation. Man, man as our Senator Marco Rubio has grown up. He's great. I love this guy. Yeah, he's impressive. And and Jonathan, you know, the, the reason these, you know, the, I was talking about this earlier with Ronnie McDaniel on Meet the Press. These are important, like this jerk Jonathan Carl. Because I know people say, who cares? What the, every time you hear one of these people speak, you get an inside look at what the Uniparty thinks of us, of Trump. And after all these years, they still don't understand it. And they don't get it. That they're they're so consumed with their hatred of Donald Trump. That's why you know when Dick Morris, who's you know a senior advisor to President Trump, Dick Morris became famous when he was the campaign manager for um, Bill Clinton's regulate uh, uh, re-election. In his second election, when he was up for re-election, Dick Morris ran the campaign, and at that time, um, the Republicans were really popular. Newt Gingrich had become speaker. And Bob Dole was the uh, Republican majority leader in the Senate, and they had that contract for America, and they were very, very popular. And Bill Clinton was up for re-election, and the Republican positions under Newt Gingrich were so popular, Dick Morris got uh, Bill Clinton to do something in his re-election campaign. That is, take all, the, all, the, all these very popular Republican positions and make them your own. And run on that. And he did. It was, and Dick Morris called it triangulation, which I don't really know what that means, triangulation. And the only issue I remember hearing Bill Clinton talk about at the time, because it's been many, many years, there were a bunch of them, but he took a Repu Republican positions and ran on them because they were so popular. One of them was uh, welfare to work. Remember that one? That was very controversial. Welfare to work. And he won re election, Bill Clinton, because the Republican Newt Gingrich positions at that time, that was the 96 campaign, were so popular that to oppose them was just to hand it over to the Republicans. And these Trump haters are so consumed with their rage, they can't get themselves to do that. Secure the border, for example. If they really did it, it would not be as easy for Trump to win. They're, making, they're paving the way for Trump's reelection. They're working for the king. He doesn't need that half a billion dollars. They're... They, Jonathan Carl right there just gave probably $2 million worth of advertising to President Trump in this idiot interview he did with uh, the great Marco Rubio. Do you want to take some calls? What do you, what do you want to do? All right. We're, we're supposed to break now, but let's take a call or two first, okay? Because some people, you know, people have been holding. You're on, the, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, guys. This is Jack. Hey, what's up? Hey, a quick word about Marco Rubio. I love that guy. I mean, yeah, me too. Texas, but I love him. Uh, he reminds me of a, young, of a Republican version of Senator uh, Bobby Kennedy. Um, not, not his politics, but just his <clears throat> guts, okay? He, he, you know, Bobby Kennedy was a little guy, uh, but he was one hell of a tough 
do, do you know, you know Marco Rubio? Do you know who he's married to? No, I do not. A Miami Dolphins cheerleader. Well, I tell you, he's got the kind of person. I can see where. There you go. Yeah, I, I can see where a girl would. Be, <clears throat> you know, like I said, he's. And, and by the way, before he was rich and famous, he married a Miami Dolphins cheerleader. So he's he's got game. I'll tell you something about the man. Exactly. It does. Yeah. I'm sure you'll Google her after the call. <clears throat> oh, absolutely. Yeah. But what, what I, like I said, what I love about him is he's got a tough as nails, no BS personality, and that's exactly what President Trump is going to need in his VP. Not, I never understood the Pence choice. Uh, but anyway, that's all I had to say. Oh, one other thing. Well, um, did you guys happen to see the interview Marjorie Taylor Greene, the ambush interview Marjor Marjorie Taylor Greene got? A couple of days ago, from some journalist. Is that is that is this the which one when when they uh the, the where she told them to f themselves? Yes. Yeah, that was that was the BBC. That was like almost two weeks ago. But that was with the BBC. They asked her about the Jewish. They 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 asked her about the Jewish space lasers, and she said, "Go f yourself," to the BBC. And what 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 was that about? What, what, I, I don't mind her telling the, the media to f off. Uh, but what was the what was the reference to the space lasers about? They the liberals have made up <coughs> this this thing that she said that the Jews were creating space borne lasers to attack the planet. She never said anything. They just made that up, and they keep reprinting it and keep saying it over and over. So repeat a lie often enough, as Goebbels said, it becomes reality. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I, I liked about the interview, well, what I what I found appalling was the journalist sucks her in. With a legitimate couple of questions about, you know, oh, who's the VP pick is going to be? Would you accept it? And then she ambushed her with this. Why are so many MAGA Republicans? I thought she did. I thought she did really well. You know, it's like one time I saw, I saw, I saw uh, um, uh, Tom Cruise was on a red carpet once, and he was doing interviews, and someone threw water all over him, a glass of water all over his face, and most celebrities would just run away. Tom Cruise said, and it was on TV. You can find this online. Don't look this up until after nine, okay? But uh, they, Tom Cruise, he's on the red carpet. The guy throws, he's, instead of running away, he says, why did you do that? What, 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 what were you thinking? What made you do that? You know, and, what, and you don't see that often because he's tough. Marjorie Taylor Greene, that was beautiful. Go, and she said the whole word. She, she didn't say go F yourself. She said the whole word. No, uh, it's beautiful. What, really, what I thought would have been, um, I had to think about it. I loved the reaction. I mean, I loved the reaction, but I thought about it, and I was like, but actually, I thought a better response would have been something along the lines of, uh, after the four years of lies you people have been telling, why wouldn't any reasonable white-minded individual mm -hmm. ask questions? And that's a conspiracy theorist. So yeah. Ask questions. Well, if you want to, if you want to hear a, if you want to hear a great interview with Marjorie Taylor Greene, go and listen to mine. I, I did what, what, what is uh, considered by many in the industry that would be me uh, to be the definitive Marjorie Taylor Greene interview. It was uh, she, she never did an interview like the one I did with her. Yeah, yeah, it was live here on the show. You, you might have missed that day, but uh, I, I promise you, she loved it. I, I, it was a great interview. Yeah. Okay. All right. Pre. pre Appreciate the call. If you're on hold, stand by. We're very late for the break. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines.
this is Mike at Friendly Tire. I've been in business 30 years at the same location and offering great deals on new and used tires. I have many suppliers. Whatever car or truck you have, I can get you incredible deals on any tire. I also do tire repairs at very low prices. Give me a call. My number is 954-977-8445. I will give you a price over the phone on new and used tires. Again, my number is 954 954- Nine seven seven nine four four five. Thank you. Your exclusive invitation to adventure awaits you aboard Margaritaville at sea. For a limited time, enjoy fifty percent off every cruise from quick and easy Bahamas getaways or longer cruise vacations on the all-new Islander, sailing to Key West in Mexico with electrifying live performances, chef-crafted cuisine, and sun-soaked activities for all ages. It's easy to see why Margarita Bell at Sea was just named a top three cruise line for families by USA Today. Book your half off sailing to paradise today. <coughs> All right, call us on hold standby. I'm Brian Steves here. You know, Steve, the uh, free shipping continues at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, site-wide. No matter what the special is, you get the special deal and free shipping. No matter how small, no matter how large, no matter how light, no matter how heavy, free shipping site-wide with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com. All right, yep, yep. They're starting to get now into the vice presidential picks. And it's good to bear in mind what's going on in the Democratic Party. Look at the people that they're considering as people like, well, people we're considering, like Marco Rubio, and compare it to Kamala. You know? Oh. You see the consequences. Did you see what, ha- did you see what happened to her this weekend? You know, her biggest fan must be Dan Quayle because, you know, Dan Quayle, they were always making fun of him and he was saying stupid stuff. She's the one, she, she comes up, there's, she goes to this event with her um, husband, the second gentleman, and she's clapping to the music that this Puerto Rican band, they're playing a song and they're singing a song. And she's clapping along and dancing to this, to this Puerto Rican three-piece band singing this song. They were singing a protest song against her, and then and then and then the person with her, I guess, understands Spanish, whispered something to her. Then she stopped clapping and dancing. Not too bright on the dip. Well, that's that's uh, Willie Brown's girlfriend. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Jim from your home city. Hey. <laughs> Down the road from your home city. Yes. Hey, hey, something that I haven't heard anybody mention uh, with with Donald Trump today, President Trump, is if when he's coming to New York to post this, no banks are allowed to deal with him. How would you say? What do you mean they're not allowed? Who says that? What do you mean they're not? Oh, because of the business transaction? Oh, he can't do business in New York? Oh. Teacher James said there is absolutely no business being done from uh, banks to Donald Trump. Don't, you, don't, you, do hope, don't you hope they pull that one? You mean so? So okay. So hold on. Hold on a second. So, so you you think Letitia J, President Trump's going to pull up with um, a motorcade of car of of uh, of uh, armored cars to fill up with half a billion dollars, and she's going to say. You can't pay us because you can't do transactions with the banks in New York? You don't, you don't think they're dumb enough to do that? 
I don't know. I mean, it's a multifaceted answer. I yeah. Hey, he could pull up with the money, or he has to have his bank call New York, which is how most people would do that. Uh, but he's not allowed to. Wow. Is he going to come up there and say, hey, I bought it, but I can't use your bank? Well, when you say... Notice the choice. Notice the choice that he's got, mm -hmm. and how bad it, what the position it puts them in, where they put themselves. Well, right. He's the first. He's the first guy to know he's not allowed to use the banks in New York because he's not allowed to do business. Well, what does that mean? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But if he's got money in a bank, he can go to the bank and make a withdrawal. He can write a check. We're going to be hanging hey, in this bank for today. And at this bank, in today is going to be. It, because of the way Donald played it, it means that everybody in the news media you know is going to be doing. They're going to be following him all day, building to the huge climax, and he's going to own the news cycle yet again. This, yeah. This every day. This, yeah. Be, this will end up being one of his largest Democratic trolls. He's going to troll these guys into the most incredible. I can't wait. Jump. Oh, I know. Hey, yeah. thanks for covering them. But, I, but I'll tell you, this is the day. Li listen, here's the day that's even going to be more exciting than this, okay? The day that Letitia, well, that before that, the day Letitia James has to give Trump the half a billion dollars back when the appeals court throws out the trust. Do you get interest? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Do you get in? It, it, usually, you know, things like this are held like in trust accounts. Do you earn? I don't think you earn interest in a trust account. Do you like that? I don't think so. I think the money's just held. Would increase in value in the short time that she'd have it. So he gets. I don't know. We're, listen, when we're talking about when we're talking about half a billion dollars, we're talking about things none of us know about. Hey, appreciate the call. Um, if you're on hold, stand by. We'll be right back. Making morning radio great again. Thank you, Colonel. Really it's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. The greatest rock and roll hits of the 60s and 70s coming up this morning. From the Palm Beach Patio Furniture Weather Center, where luxurious outdoor spaces are created. you by Palm Beach Patio Furniture, Route 1 Seminole Plaza Shops, North Palm Beach. Palm Beach Patio Furniture, voted in the best of the best patio store in Palm Beach County. PalmBeachPatioFurniture.com, where luxurious outdoor spaces are created. And now, a true oldies traffic check, brought to you by the Palm Beach Kennel Club. This is still traffic to look out for I-95 northbound between 10th Avenue and Okeechobee Boulevard. Heading over to the Turnpike southbound between Southern Boulevard and Lake Worth Road, there's some heavy traffic. This report is sponsored by HCA Florida Healthcare. Whenever you need them, just reach out and they will be there with more locations, more experts, and more resources to deliver to healthcare you need to comfort you and make you feel your best. Find a care site near you at hcafloridahealthcare.com. And that's traffic. I'm Daphne Smith. Traffic, a service of the Palm Beach Kennel Club. Come out to the poker room at PBKC with cash games, eye hand giveaways, mega bad beat jackpots, and big money tournaments. You can also play your favorite table games like Ultimate Texas Hold'em or three card poker with just $5 minimums seven days a week. One of the most popular poker tournaments in South Florida returns April 4th through the 7th. It's the $100,000 Monster Multi Flight. Go to pbkennelclub.com for more information.
Franklin Free, and they're our first My Pillows, and we love them. We absolutely love them. They're just absolutely So I don't normally talk about this kind of stuff anymore, but I am just so genuinely curious that I have to ask the question. <laughs> How are there still people out there that still genuinely believe that the person who is running this country is doing a great job and yeah. they still want him to continue to run the country? And I'm not referring to the people who know that this person is corrupted, but they still want him in because they have underlining agendas. I'm talking about the people who still genuinely believe that this person is a good person to run this country. Like, are you tired of going to the grocery store and having to spend $160 just on eight items of food? Are you tired of going to the gas station and having to put $60 of gas just to fill up your car? Are you tired of seeing the chaos that is happening around the entire world because of the choices that have been made from this person in office? How can you continue to be so deceived despite living in your current reality? You have to do these things every day. We all have seen it. But you are still being deceived, and I don't understand how that can happen. Some people ask me, how can I still want to vote for the last person who was running this country? And I can just give you a simple answer. Using my simple observational skills and knowledge and awareness, I can see that when the last person was in, things wasn't as expensive. People could have to do these things every day. We all have seen it. But you are still being deceived, and I don't understand how that can happen. Some people ask me, but you are still being deceived, and I don't understand how that can happen. All right, we are back. Call us on old standby. I'm Brian Craig. Steve Kane is here. Mm. Trump is. Absolutely. When you brought up the, the thing that the, they had found the money for... No, he just, he had it all along. He just didn't brag about it. <laughs> but then it was taken care of. That was Correct. a big mystery. This was money, by the way, that he... Had set aside for his campaign. Some of it was for the campaign, he said. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the largely money he would not be able to use in his campaign, ostensibly. But then, and I timed it with my genius. I was so smart. You know, well, who was the one that put up the money? Because there, <clears throat> Tricia James is also threatening anybody that tries to help Trump. Mm hmm and uh, but Trump knew what he was doing. He didn't give that information. That way, he's going to get publicity. He's going to be the center of attention all day today. It's going to be an event because he left that question unanswered. Who put it up? He did. There's no no nobody put it up. It's it's money. He he said it's money that he had in the bank. Turn it into a major news cycle. Oh yeah. It's a topic of uh, discussion all. Oh yeah, he's genius. Oh, he's brilliant. He, you know, he, what President Trump is good at, uh, at many, many things, but what he's best at is media manipulation. That's, I mean, the, 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 that's it. And he's the only Republican that can control the media narrative. No one else. We're always all the other Republicans are always responding to the narrative. Um, you want to take some more calls? What do you want to do? Let's do it. All right. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Dennis from Virginia. Yes, Dennis. Yes. Uh, until it, it's decided who owns the, uh, uh, wins the judgment, it's the money that earns the interest, not the people. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. In other words, if you, yeah, look, makes sense. If you look at the uh, laws of New York State, I'll read from the internet. According to the New York State Civil Practice Law and Rules, CPLR, 
The interest rate on a pre- or post-judgment is 9% per annum. That's per year. But under a new law, starting April 30, 2022, this 9% interest will drop to 2% if the judgment debtor defendant is an individual who owes a consumer debt. Okay, so what's that mean? So the money that when, when President Trump gives Letitia half a billion dollars, it's going to earn 2% interest? I think, I think it's 9%. 9%. Okay, so he'll make money. When he gets the money back, it'll be the half a billion plus 9% interest. Right, right. In other words, it depends on who wins the appeal. How much money, how much money is that on half a billion dollars when he gets it? How much money would that be? Uh, well, I don't know. You'll have to calculate it out. I guess it's like 10% of a half a billion dollar, $50 million. Yeah. $8 million. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So like, so like, so so President Trump is 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 going to make millions and millions of dollars off of Letitia James's stupidity and corruption. That is, if he wins the appeal, if they well, of course he will. Of course he will. Okay, all right. So so he'll win about forty-seven, forty-eight million dollars. Uh, Beautiful. I don't know that I share your confidence that he'll. The, the appeals court has overruled Judge and Goron like four times already, man. I just thought I'd put my two cents. Well, you put two cents in. That's good. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Ivy and Robert. Hey. Steve, Hi, Ivy. How are you doing? Hope you're enjoying the new dog. I think about your dog, and I didn't. I never got your dog's name, but we'll move forward from that. But I know how painful it is. Um, I want to thank Hillary Clinton so much because. She enlightened the country and opened up the eyes by opening up the Pandora's the Pandora's box. Now these people don't know how when they get into a corner they don't they don't know how to account for variables, okay? And and for them to think, look, hey, you Democrat, even if Trump is in jail, even if he couldn't pay the money, even if they took his building, even if they took Mar-a-Lago. Even if he's in jail, don't you understand that he can still be president and rule the country from jail? This is this is all for naught. No, no, no. But Letitia, listen, listen. People make plans for their, you know, their glorious moments. And Letitia James had this fantasy that she's been rehearsing where she was going to seize something that Trump owned this week. Now she's not going to be able to do this. She figured it out yet? No. I, I love the slap directly in the face because the variables, what they do in practice in books and in colleges, doesn't lend to life experiences. Trump deals with distributors, salespeople, contractors, bankers, international people, people that can, you know that knows how to make golf courses and buildings. <coughs> he, he talks to so many variety of people in his life. All these people do is look at the book and, and go to work and talk to friends in the immediate circle. They don't have any real life experiences. <coughs> Which accounts in part for the success he has in dealing with these people. Mm hmm Go through hell before it gets better, and I don't have to call in every day to say Trump is biblical. Oh yes. And and I love I love I love, uh, I love your wife, uh, Brian. She said she used my words, the pie piper on your podcast. Oh. With the laughing. That we're gonna take because once we see the youth, once we see the youth start coming to the the the, the rallies now. Now that this is under the... That's true. Okay. You saw that the black vote has really just gone berserk. They, they've left in huge amounts. They've deserted... Uh, hey, hey, IB, thanks, thanks for the call. Now, I, I will say, some, some people will say that, uh, well, if he had the money, why didn't he just pay it like two weeks ago? All this great publicity. Exactly. There's been, you know, <laughs> all, all these people in the media, oh, he's broke, he's got no money, he's begging for money. Don Lamont asked Elon Musk, did Trump ask you to borrow money? And then, boom, he comes in with his own money, and it's half a billion dollars. There's been so much buildup to it. And then when he pays it today, it's like, it's like the grand finale. I mean, it's, you know, it, he knows exactly how to put on a show. Who he is. Exactly. I, this is, uh, ex when I saw that on Friday, I thought, you know, on Monday, this is going to be such old news, and the media aren't even really, they're not reporting it. Because they don't, they, there's, the media are still living in this fantasy that they don't want to escape from, 
that Trump's going to get something seized today. I think he's bluffing. Yeah, well, you know. I don't believe him. Yeah, I, I yeah. You know, so, some, some people called up in the first hour and said he should pay it in pennies, but I don't think there's that many pennies in America. Somebody who paid. I was telling that story earlier. You, 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 I didn't tell the whole story, though, but I, uh, yeah, what happened was, yeah, little boy, uh, I wasn't going to mention the name, but, you know, he went, when, remember that episode of the Twilight Zone where the mannequins came to life? When you mention these people's name, they're mannequins that come to life, Steve. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's true. It's true. But you you had a bet with him, and it was like, I think it was $300, something like that. It was, it was like two or $300. You won the bet, and he was going to stick it to you by paying you in pennies. And he came in with these money bags of pennies. I don't remember how many bags it was. And you didn't care. You just took it to the bank. <laughs> well, I was, I was, well, I, okay, you can tell. No, no, no. I, I wasn't going to share that part. I wasn't going to share that part of the story. Okay, well, that's the punchline. I know, I know, but now, you know. He, he uh, uh, our friend Lynn will marry oh, there he is. With, with sacks <clears throat> of pennies and dumped them in the... No, no, no. He said... You got it, okay, now I'll tell, no, you got it backwards. He said... <laughs> oh, my goodness. He said he collected the pennies out of the urinal at the, uh, in the men's room at a gay bar. Whatever, whatever, you know. It exists today, does it? I, I, don't, I don't know. Where do, you, where do you go when you go to Orlando, Steve? But anyway, he said he he said he collected the pennies out of the urinal of a of, of the urinals at a at a gay bar's men's room, which he you know thought made him look it made him look bad, not you, that he was on his hands and knees at the urinals waiting for the money. But anyway, pennies work, but I don't think there's enough pennies in America to pay half a billion dollars. I just have a just have a suspicion. Uh, this is all great stuff. I mean, th it doesn't get better than this. You know, it really does not get better than this. Truth is going to be better than this. That's the moment. Oh, yeah. Cool happens. Oh, you know. This is going to be there. Yeah. Because it involves Trump. It's correct. Because he's, Trump's going to see to it. Well, you know, here's the. Here, His opportunity is going to win. You know, here's the thing, okay, when it, when it comes to um, publicity and Trump, they're doing the. the you may not realize this, but they have this Stormy Daniels. Um, okay, well, just wait until you know. Give me another. Minute. Uh, if not, we'll do it. Um, the uh, uh, Stormy Daniels, the, that 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 ridiculous case with Bragg. I, they're doing jury selection starting today in that in that Stormy Daniels case with Bragg. So they thought that would be the highlight of the news. Nobody cares about that. They got this, you know. You know what I mean? I mean, the timing was perfect. They, they, they thought, they thought that there were going to be there was going to be a split screen on television. On the right side was the skanky, I mean, uh, uh, Stormy Daniels jury selection. On the left side would be Letitia seizing some Trump property. They're not going to be that way now. It's going to be Trump giving five hundred million dollars to Letitia. That's you know, it's like on Friday, uh, Candace Owens. You know, Candace Owens got fired on Friday by Ben Shapiro's uh, media outlet. Uh, I'll t well, I'll, t I'll tell you in a minute. But, um, <laughs> she, and, and she kind of timed this, and she thought she was going to have a big weekend. But, but the, at the same moment is when uh, Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, announced she had cancer. So it, it took all the, all the gossip pages weren't about Ben Shapiro firing Candace. Exactly. Exactly. You know, all, all the gossip places that would have carried the firing of Candace Owens carried the Kate, Middle, the Princess of Wales cancer diagnosis. So that, you know, it just, and that's kind of what's happening today, right? She's not, uh, you know, she didn't get the publicity she wanted on Friday, Candace Owens. And today, things aren't going as planned for the never Trumpers. All right, listen, we're going to take a, um, a quick break. Is that, we're not going to take the break? Okay, we don't have William Youngerman, which you know what that means, Steve. That means you get the uh, you get the amateur gold report, and the amateur gold report, the yeah the amateur gold report is 
it's really embarrassing. All I do is I go to WilliamYoungerman.com and I just read the prices off his website. That's the Amateur Gold Report. So I, I can't give you any insights or buy recommendations or anything. That's up to William Youngerman. Yeah, but William Youngerman does um, open up at 10 a.m. And uh, you can call or stop in at 10 a.m. and get the uh, – because he, he will be in and will be um, open today. Gold is up, Steve, $10.90 at twenty one seventy six thirty. You know, oh, no, we actually, we got William Youngman on the line. We're going to get, I'll, I'll just, forget about the break. We'll just go to William Youngman. I was, yeah, well, don't worry. William Youngman, I was just about to start the Amateur Gold Report. Thankfully, you're on the line and can save the audience from that. We'll get the Professional Gold Report from the offices of William Youngman Incorporated in Boca. We have William Youngman. William Youngman, good morning. Good morning, Brian. How are you doing? Good, good, good. You, you, I was just beginning the Amateur Gold Report because we didn't have you on the line yet, and uh, thankfully we got you because uh, the metals are looking good. Coming nicely and uh, trading in a rate. $62 to $2,177. We're looking at $2,174. That's up. So, uh, silver's up $0.05. Cents. 68, we did it to $24.82 so far this morning. Platinum of $14 at $907 an ounce, and palladium of $31 at $998. Uh, markets are looking good. Absolutely. And let me let me ask you, because I, I know last year, I don't know what you have this year, but, you know, Easter's coming up, and are there, are there any coins in particular that you have that would be good for mom, dad, or grandma and grandpa to buy for the kids for Easter? Oh, you do have the uh, interest in uh, Noah's Ark one of silver coins. Oh, you still have the Noah's Ark silver coins. Though we we got a we got a bit of a bad connection with you, William Youngerman. So, um, but stay with me, and then I'll give out your information. Now, those Noah's Ark uh, silver coins—they're one ounce coins. They are beautiful coins. You got some of those last year, Steve, right? Th those are a great gift for Easter for the kids or the grandkids, and it gets them into saving and gets them into the, into the medals. Those are great. That is a great. So, so any anything else you may have for Easter, William Youngman, or do you, or you recommend the uh, greatest gift or the uh, Noah's Ark one ounce silver coins? Oh, we have we have a few other different designs and stuff on on silver coins and gold coins. So you should come in and take a look and see what you'll see. You. A beautiful thing. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, listen, William Youngman opens up at 10 a.m. You can stop in at 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca on the first floor of the Bank of America building. Uh, just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. Online, WilliamYoungerman.com or call toll-free 1-800-327-5010. 1-800-327-5010. All right, William Youngerman, we'll touch base tomorrow. All right, take care. All right, let's go back to the uh, phone, Steve, and then we've got a couple other things, too, I haven't even gotten to yet. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, guys. Good morning. It's JJ. Oh, hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. Hey. What's up? Well, I'm just, um, it's, a, it's a happy day. I've been enjoying all the uh, conversations about the pennies, dimes, nickels, all the different, uh, you know, valuations. And the 9% thing, I think, was um, was pretty, uh, if, if that, in fact, is the case, that, that that's a lot of money. But I don't think that Letitia uh, uh, is going to have that money for very long anyway. But uh, still, earning interest, that'll be um, quite the win. I, I think that Trump has been, I mean, he knew he was going to have the money. He's an entertainer. Politics in some oh, ways yeah. is entertainment. He wrote the script. And he is playing, he's playing a masterpiece right now. I mean, it's, to me, it's kind of like you've got, it's sort of like the good, the bad, and the ugly. You've got Trump. Yeah. The bad would be the tricky shames, and the <laughs> angry moron, the judge, would be um, the ugly. And uh, Trump's going to come out on top. I, I guarantee you they're already working on memes and some video advertising. I mean, because it's going to be so embarrassing yeah. when they have to give the money back, you know. Well, you know, and this is one of the fake false narratives that the, the never Trumpers have is that Trump's ego's out of control. Hey, big ego, big ego. If, if, if he had ego issues, he wouldn't have held out on the money. He would, have got, he would have let everybody knew he had it in the beginning and paid it. The fact that he was able to let them talk on television for two weeks like this shows that ego is not an issue. It's like 
Shack Week, and, and Trump was basically just letting, he's chumming the waters, letting them all come in, and all come in, and then bang. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's good versus evil. Trump wins at the end of the day. And Always. I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see the <clears throat> videos. It's sort of like the bloodbath comment. When he said that during the speech, you've got to know the tactics of the deep state and the left. You had to know, and his team around him, that you know, he's got a tremendous team. They were going to set. They, they were going to center in <clears throat> on that word. Mm -hmm. What happened? Like the next day, Trump had an ad out about blood blast, mm -hmm. bloodbath at the southern border, the bloodbath in Ukraine, you know, the, the bloodbath, bloodbath in Israel, mm -hmm. and um, he, he's just he is magnificent in his strategy. Well, it's, it's brilliant, and and I'll tell you, I bet you that uh, fan or uh, I got. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got my corrupt public officials confused. Not Fanny, Letitia. Uh, I bet you Letitia James already had a, a CNN crew assigned with her that were setting up cameras at whatever Trump property she was going to try to seize today. Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be a bad day. It's a bad day for her. Wait until she has to give the money back to President Trump. Exactly. It, 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 it's, um, I mean, Trump's already, he's, he's like 10, 12 steps ahead. He's Always. Been, and now he's going to, you know, he's going to pull him out of the water like he's at the fish. That's right. Yeah, I do. I love it. This is great. A compassion for Trump and us. Oh, no, no, no. No compassion. Million. Oh, great. Good. You're, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Steve calling from this great state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. What's up? And uh, Yeah, I think that... How you doing there, Steve? Uh, yeah, I think that... Uh, <clears throat> all righty. I think that <clears throat> Trump has had this together two weeks ago. Yep. It turned come up to, to what was going on, I think all he has to do basically is call his bank, have him uh, do a wire to whoever he needs to send it to, and when they get notices they received it, that's the end of the story. I don't think it's going to be a big deal because Trump's word is working on his campaign. He's... he's uh. well, well, the media, I, it, it is a big deal. The media... I don't know. I think the media will try to downplay it. You're going to realize what's going on until it's too late. You're right, Steve. I think they haven't realized they won't wake. He told, the, he, told the, he told the world on Friday that he had the $500 million in this lying around. They're slow. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, well, what it's happened? Really the sharpest knife in the drawer. They work for the government, so, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, what what the whole situation is? He told them two weeks ago or two days ago that he had it, and still nobody believes it. Mm -hmm. Believe him right through this morning. Yeah, so that's what's happening. So uh, I think he's going to uh, just uh, just make a wire transfer, and uh, when it comes to get it back, she's going to have to give him. A I don't, I don't, I don't like the yeah. You know, it should be interesting. Tomorrow's show should be interesting. As we experience the humiliation firsthand. And well, I know what I would do if I were him. I, this wire transfer thing, I would send Alina Haba in person with the transfer check or whatever they do and have her go in person to the clerk's office and do it. You got to, you know, have a TV moment on it. Yeah. That would be fantastic. I could, I could see her giving away her $87 million dollars. That'd be beautiful. Could you see Alina Haba going down there with check in hand over her head, walking down the street? Taking all them pennies and leaving it. I guess so. Yeah, no, but uh, if Alina Haba did that, could you imagine her her walking into the with the with the check over her head, signed by Donald Trump, and she has a press conference first, holding up the check? That's oh. That I lost. Getting it now because y'all's getting it all. That's right. All right. Take care. Pre appreciate the call. Now, if you're on hold, stand by. Yeah, I want to uh, tell people uh, about Jupiter. Comes to finances, you know, we're talking about you want to you want to take financial advice from someone who's successful, right? You know, and that's Jupiter Joe Thomas. Did you know Jupiter Joe Thomas is a five-time qualifying member of the Million Dollar Roundtable, which is achieved by less than 1% of all financial advisors on the planet? Not in America, the whole world. 
You're, so you got a top financial guy right here offering you a free phone consultation if you mention you heard about him on the radio. That is absolutely amazing. And I, hi I tell this to Joe a lot. I highlight Jupiter Joe Thomas uh, because Jupiter, that's where the... That's where the rich and successful people live in Jupiter. You remember, Burt Reynolds made it famous, but you've been to Jupiter lately? That's where Don Jr. lives. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know who else lives in Jupiter? Morning Joe and Mika live in Jupiter. I know. All the, uh, it's, it's the new Palm Beach. It is where the uber rich and successful live. And that's, that's who you want to go to for financial advice. You don't want to go to me. You want to go to Jupiter Joe Thomas, okay? Here's his number. Now, if you missed the number, and again, this, this free phone consultation, you can take advantage of this no matter where you're located. If you miss his number, just go to his website, jupiterjoe.com. Okay, jupiterjoe.com. 561-743-0999. 561-743-0999. And again, if you miss the number, you can get it off his website, jupiterjoe.com. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, good morning. It's Berta from the Lone Star State of Texas. Hey, Hello, I'm excited with all of this going on. Um, I can't wait till the election time. It's going to be more exciting than Reagan. Um, this is actually divine intervention for sure because everything they throw at him, everything they throw at him, he, he ends up get, gaining. But I can't wait till tomorrow because I want to see the news tomorrow and see the humiliation in all New York and what they're doing to Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Exciting, okay? But it's only gonna do, it's only gonna push him to win more. If, if they win or, or Trump wins, it doesn't matter. He's gonna win, period. Mm-hmm. What's gonna happen? The people now have raised them up. Even, even um, I was surprised because people in Miami that I speak to that are really uh, pro-liberal now are pro-Trump. Um, I was completely surprised. So he, I, I, Brian, do you have any of the numbers on the black community? On the black community? No. I, I don't have the black numbers now. Some slaughter. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In front by about 40%. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I read that. And, and I think it's more than Reagan, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. More than Reagan support. So I cannot wait for that map the next day after election. It's going to be, we're going we're gonna to experience... A history in the making that we're going to be able to tell our grand, great and grandchildren about so, this, you know? Lord, Lord willing, we'll experience just that. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Okay. But aren't, aren't, I appreciate the call. You know, the, the historical significance of what is happening here is really beyond description. We are When you're living through great historical moments, most of the time you probably don't realize it until after, but this is one of them. I mean, everything that they have put him through in the last three and a half years, and in the last few months in particular with these court cases, it's a, it is a miracle. It better go the way we planned it, or it going to look bad. The potential of rebounding on this. No, 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 no. This is, uh, this is going to go very well. This is going to go very, very well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We will be back tomorrow and uh tomorrow will be the day after Aftermath. oh you know the media they're you're right steve i don't think they realize that he's going to pay it today i they really they're they're so caught up in that oh he's broke he's poor he's gonna be yeah Tuck in. well it will real quick like us when obamacare got ruled constitutional by the supreme court it, you know they're gonna it's going to happen. I like the idea. I, maybe if they're listening to Mar-a-Lago, whatever they're planning on doing, change it up. Send Alina Haba down there with check in hand. Have a press conference. Have her show the check to the media. Then go in and pay it. That'd be, oh, that would really piss them off. All right, that's all. Oh, yeah, you, need, you, need more, you need more pennies than exist, Steve, to pay $500 million. There's not that many pennies. All right, we're out of time for today. It's the Steve Kane Show. I'm Brian Craig. We'll be back tomorrow. WSFS 104.3 HD3. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you later, all right? Subscribe if you're new. Everyone else, like the video, okay? Take care.